keep like. Yeah. chair and join us in the alcove it was episode 24 of our homebrewed fifth edition DD campaign the chaos or a pack of beer as always before we start we have a handful of quick announcements what? to go through what <laughs> isn't there 24 cans in a can? i was gonna make a really yeah. bad jack bauer joke but you kind of trumped it oh, so yeah. i kind of like hard cut it i should have uh, said wow. case of beer not a pack of beer <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 A 24 pack of beer <laughs> you know, <it's> jeez <laughs> We go live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and our Perfect. wads are uploaded to YouTube Perfect. every Friday. We also yeah. do reruns on our Twitch channel every Thursday morning and Monday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern. Give us a follow down below to get a notification whenever we're about to go live. 
While you're checking out the links below, be sure to follow us on all of our social media accounts, like Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, for all of the latest news and schedule updates, as well as awesome character art, profiles, and other fun things. Also, a big shout out to Sirenscape, because epic games need epic sound. Sirenscape is a digital tool with a collection of amazing sound sets and music <laughs> that we use to improve the ambiance of our game and stream. If you're looking for a way to improve the immersion at your RPG table, go check them out at sirenscape.com. Wasn't early this time. <laughs> also, for today's episode, I wanted to give a special shout out to Elderwood Academy. Not sponsored, not an ad. Just really recently received this beautiful custom master tome GM screen that I backed on Kickstarter. Tell us more more about that awesome screen. Can we yeah. show like pictures and stuff? I have tweeted out some pictures oh, on my social media. If you follow me at Razor Flash, I don't. Uh, where you can see some pictures <laughs> of some of the awesome features that it has, so such sassy as sassy a dice tray, <laughs> magnetic uh, uh, paper, DM notes holders, magnetic holders, magnets. Awesome. It has magnets. <laughs> magnets. I know how magnets work. Magnets. 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 Yeah. Recently, they managed to, to ship those. Uh, they managed to ship those uh, out for their Kickstarter backers, and I absolutely love it. Uh, go check them out at elderwoodacademy.com or at Elderwood Boxes. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Okay. Well, Whenever I hear it, dot com. Yeah, 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 dot com. Elderwoodacademy.com. All right. I think it's about time for us to get started. Feels like secrets. <laughs> so, previously on the chaos. You're now cursed. <laughs> he specifically pointed out there's red dragon scales. Real ones? Scooch. Scooch? No, no. Oh, you scooch? I scooch. That <laughs> doesn't work at all. I scooch it. What happened to the music? Damn, 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 damn. Damn, 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 damn. Yeah, we can just provide our own, it's fine. Damn, 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 damn. Sirenscape's not the only digital sound. <clears throat> After an attempted escape from the Mushroom Lounge, headquarters of the perfectly legitimate business known as the Govendalis, yeah, the went awry, the Iron Will found himself bloodied and near death, and confronted by Ezekiel Mirilar, a very powerful, very influential, and very dangerous man. Escorting you all back to his office, he made you an offer that you couldn't refuse. Either pay restitutions for the damage and the loss of life incurred in your escape. <laughs> or die. Or work for him in a mutually beneficial capacity, uh -huh. or extending his reach out into the rest of the city, while providing you with the benefit of being able to leverage his contra contacts and resources. In exchange for your freedom, he offered you an opportunity to work off the debt, which he implicitly placed upon you, as both judge and jury, by helping track down any of several loose ends throughout the city. But as the conversation between you grew heated, more adamant. You learned a little more about Mr. Marilar, and how the scope of his powers was maybe not to be trifled with, especially not when all of you were near death. We were fine. <laughs> As he forced you all to return any of his belongings that you had procured during your escape. <laughs> as well as dominating the mind of the big one as he grew more and more frustrated by his constant interruptions. So pissed. <laughs> My favorite was He's the thing bitch. on top of the professor. <laughs> no, we don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was me forgetting. <laughs> yeah. I that to his back. He also <laughs> asked the special guest performer at the lounge, Miss Lyra Loveless, <laughs> to help him bind Artmere to be true to his word and bring one of the three targets that he mentioned to justice. He's perfect. Or suffered dire consequences. As the long day ended and you made your way back through the streets of Ward 3 to the Golden Anvil, in low spirits and under various different means of surveillance, <laughs> you all collapsed into a fitful long rest before preparing for the beginning of the next leg of your journey. The scry. Oh, the scry. Yeah, uh, there and was the a crow, crow as well. Mm -hmm. The scroll. It's during this long rest that I would like everyone except for Arkmir to leave the table. What? Oh, what? No. <laughs> Way to go, Arkmir. Oh, oh, you don't die. Sorry, Arkmir. We're taking my drink. <laughs> Can I come back to We're taking the turkey. He's dead, Arkmir. <laughs> <laughs> Face is just down on the table. I have to die. <laughs> What's going here and watch? 
As you lie on your bedroll, trying to fall asleep after all the events that you went through today, your mind races through the consequences of everything that you've been through. Each time you close your eyes, your mind gets lost in a different memory of the day. The drinks that you had, how it addled your mind a little, the mirror in which you saw Lady Garnett, this battle with a giant electro steel scorpion, and Lyra's voice as she sang and cast her spell upon you. It's at this point, during this fitful closing and opening of your eyes, that you realize there's a cold wind blowing across your face. And as you open your eyes, you find yourself in a dark, closed quarters under a blanket. As you take the blanket off and look up, it's dimly lit with bluish green light bobbing a little. You're underneath a warm blanket near the bow of a gasht, a long riverboat that you recognize from your past. The river itself is very wide and lazy, small inlets cut out from it on both sides. On the banks of the river you can see tall towering trees of all sorts. Occasionally, from within the shadows of the pitch-black night, small wooden docks jut out, as you can see, with other similar-looking boats tied and moored upon them. Above you, as you look up, there's narrow ropes that span the entire width of the river, stretching from the boughs of the trees on opposite ends. From these hang glowing blue and green orbs, lanterns, sorts, providing a dim, mystical, and eerie aura. You immediately recognize this, this place. This is the Risqua River, the main artery of the Rexate of Marinuin. Your home. And you've made many, many such journeys in your line of work. Alone, under the cover of darkness, with nothing but the forest around you the slow rowing of the boat. As you look back to where the uh, Rashti, the uh, man who would be steering the boat, would stand with this long paddle that's usually used to row, you see a figure standing there, wearing a cloak, a long coat, and a hood pulled up. In the dark, you can barely make that out there facial features, they're wearing some sort of a mask, it's hard to tell. It's cold. As you get up, you can you immediately get blasted with this gust of cold air coming from the direction that you're rowing in. What do you do? Um, do I see anything like a head that's like emitting this cold air? Nothing. The boat is slowly making its way up the river. In the distance, you still hear, coming I mean, almost off a little to your right, the song that Lyra Lovelace sang. Her voice in the distance. I don't. It's faint, it's very faint. faint. Can I head back to the back of the boat to just like see who this who this person is? You make your way back, and the person doesn't seem to be able to see you, or notice you, or make any regards of you, doesn't notice. As you walk up, you can see that above the mask, you can make out red skin, black eyes, violet hair. Okay. It's you. Did I see... Wearing a mask and a hood and a cloak, but... If I look over the edge of the boat, I'm just like, can I see any reflection in the water? And is that... As you look over in the water, you can see a reflection, but it's not, it's all, it catches you off guard. It's not, it's you, but it's different. Your teeth are a little bit more pointed, 
more jagged. Your hair is longer, white, almost with just faint trailing wisps of purple. Your horns seem more exaggerated, longer. Your eyes, while pitch black, have the smallest dot of violet purple, a pupil of sorts within them. It's you, but it's not you. I've never seen this before. I'm just like looking at my hands and I guess I see that still slightly different. It, they so. look like you're wearing what you were wearing when you fell asleep. Oh fuck. Um And I say if I even say anything to the person behind me, they're saying they don't notice me, right? Like, where are we going? Do you uh, say something? Yeah, it's just like where where are you taking me? Where are we going? You have Difficulty saying anything in common. The words that escape your mouth, even though you intended to ask them in common, they escape an inferno. It's strange. As you say something, you hear a voice, an echo in your head. It says, You'll come here soon. It's a man's voice, deep. Almost grating a little. Grating? Like some, yeah, it's like it has a little bit of a raspy okay. undertone to it. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll come here soon. And it's not a voice that I recognize then. Do I. Am I able to just like. In this world, do I feel things like normal, or is it? What do you want to like try? You touch feel cold. the water. You touch the boat. You can touch the boat. Once so you touch the water, your hands run through the water. It feels like water. What happens if I go and like try and take the oar? As you try to touch the figure, you cannot touch. It. it passes through. Oh, so the oar as well, because I guess they're holding and stuff. Yeah. Um, do I notice anything else on this boat, or...? You notice that the boat, as it's rowing, up ahead, the river is almost forking in two different directions. And then you also notice a third inlet on one side. The two, the main thoroughfare of the river, that appears to be where it's coldest, where the cold wind is blowing from. Okay. Where it's forking to the right, from that direction, you can hear Lyra Lovelace's well. song. The little inlet to the left, if you look, you can make out in the distance along the banks of the river. There's four figures walking. One tall, with large elephantine ears, trunk, one shorter, with a large hammer the shield and your two companions tiefling and Kalthir you recognize them immediately off in the distance very far away they're walking along that river do they hear me if I yell them? don't seem to as you lean out do you yell them? yeah okay. as you yell you lose. They do not reply. But you hear another voice. Different voice. Hmm. As the figure in your reflection in the water looks up and says, You know, there's always another way. There's always another way. Take a leap. I'm gonna. The figure who's rowing the boat looks back and for the first time says to you in that same grating voice that you heard in your head your path was chosen follow the river unite with your family we 
can use you. Where I will. Then another of oh, this the song to the right picks up. You hear Lyra Lovelace's voice enchanting, saying to you, Um, we can make such sweet melodies together. And to your left, along that path, your friends continue to walk. Can I... I want to dive into the water here. And you take a leap, jump into the water. The ice-cold wind immediately fades away with the warmth, and almost like warm feeling of water. You feel comfortable and safe. And you wake up. So, y'all can come back. <laughs> We're all dead. Thirty. He's turned us all in. I've already just about finished my drink. There's nothing else to do, so, so there's that. We have a problem. <laughs> Kelter. You were in your oh, trance. Oh, we got of them? No. <laughs> Everybody was up. You were in your trance. You can generally keep an eye on things. You, with your passive perception, you notice that Arkmir was having some difficulty sleeping. You noticed him tossing and turning. You noticed him almost, like, shivering cold. Again? It wasn't really a blanket that he tried to sleep with. Was he cuddling with him? Yeah, what was he trying to sleep <laughs> with? He was just trying to... Just, it was just cold. Just shivering. I light him on fire. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm in my trance right now. I'm not. I'm just watching. Yep. Time when snow goes up. <laughs> <laughs> it's towards the end of your trance, probably just after, that you notice him calm down almost a little. His shoulders are hunched and he's shivering. They relax a little. And you see his eyes kind of come to and open as he wakes up. Didn't he get something like this when we were outside of sophistication? <clears throat> Didn't you get like super cold at one point and then I like vanished something? <laughs> or like got rid of something? Oh, yeah. Is, this, is it very much similar to that, or is this we just there. like, uh, it's hard well, to tell because he was rough That time he was <laughs> having difficulty waking up at all, right? Like, he was, it was like a fever that he had. He was, oh, yeah. he was cold. Mm-hmm. This time he wakes up and he seems normal. A little bit, I don't know how you steam after you wake up. <laughs> um, the surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Just kind of like, oh, they wake up and make it a lot more comfortable than I see when I'm trying to get to sleep early. Mm-hmm. Or a little more rested. Hard time sleeping last night. I think I think the previous days are just catching up to me. That's fair. Um, I guess, like, at this point, are we getting out to where everybody is waking up? Yeah, I feel like everybody would be about to wake up. Okay. Uh, you can mark your long rest. Are you done? <laughs> done. <laughs> Everyone feeling a bit better now? I'm not gonna lie, I didn't feel that bad before. <laughs> I didn't. I mean, I was there. I was helping. I didn't find that that bad. I definitely feel quite a bit better. I better. Physically, it's still uh, still weighing on me pretty heavy. What we're got ourselves into. Yes, I suppose we should discuss. Uh, where we go from here. <laughs> uh, God, 
Want to share with the class? <laughs> Sorry. I was, I was looking back at my notes for the last time. In episode 12, I wrote, Arkner gets chilly, healthier warms him up. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you drew a minion. And you drew a It was a shopping episode. So it was the shopping <laughs> Excited. Um, <laughs> we've been given some options where we go from here. I think... Um, well, you, you two were building something. I think there's still the opportunity to explore that as well. Let's see what we can do with that for the city. I mean, we were trying to help Ward 8 and Freedom Hold, but I don't know if Freedom Hold is still there or not. I mean, I'm confused. You spoke to Cassandra and she said that everything was peachy and then... Middlear said that it all went to shit. Yes, um, I guess we'll have to find out. Big one. Being from the city, you would know that the clouds that come from the uh, sort of like the climatology bureau, particularly like where six and seven, the ones that are farther away from the mountain, <clears throat> it can sometimes take days to get there. Like they move very slowly. Mm. Well, we did contact Cassandra relatively quickly after the incident in War Three. Um, pretty, pretty big city, slow-moving clouds. It may have taken some time when post when we contacted her for it actually reached there. And if what Mirlar said is true, then it could have been pretty catastrophic. Well, maybe Cassandra is dead. I hope not, but. I mean, I can reach out today and see what the status is. Are we even able to follow and continue that while we have this other predicament on our hand? I mean, we could just kill Arkmere. <laughs> Get over with. Yeah. Okay, uh, that was a joke. I had a, th a thought on that. Uh, <laughs> one of the options that Miralar gave us was to investigate his old... Uh, employee, Hazarek, uh, who was working out of Ward 8. Uh, mm. I think if we were to explore that option, that would be a starting place, and then we could double up on our time there, if that's something we wanted to, to do. I suppose as long as we're making progress with his tasks, we can carry out some others of our own. I suppose, but... Um, even if Freedom Hold is not there anymore, it would probably be worth a shot to see if this thing works. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Because if we can help the city, perhaps we can help the city reduce its reliance on the shards. Yeah, theoretically, so that, if this device works, it would be very monumental for the city. It could change the... It could solve a lot of potential... Uh, the buttings of heads between different wards. How are you, lad? This morning. That was very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Baby stuff. <clears throat> I, feel like all I think it's time to let the, the essence. I am. I know what I. I understand what I put myself into. Now we need to, or I need to move forward and find something for Miralar. I mean, you definitely didn't put him there in this position yourself. We were all there. We all did it. And you were kind of chosen as tribute. <laughs> you didn't have to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mistakes were made, and I don't think that. Some of the things that were done help build trust, but I think it's important that we restart somewhere. And I don't want you to die, lad. So... Uh, perhaps don't push any more buttons. No. Um, <laughs> I, I also have hey, some... During the conversation, somebody said that yeah. all we did was push a button. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I do have some thoughts on um, what may have been done to you. I think I, I want to think a little bit more on it and understand it. And then 
if I was to attempt anything, it would obviously be at your will. Uh, if it was something that you wanted us to try, knowing there may be risks involved with that. Um, but maybe, maybe in a couple days' time, I'll, I'll have a, something that we can try. Um, I'll forewarn you, though. I will, it's, it'll be something I've never attempted before. We could cut so off your arm, you, and then my dad could make you one like mine. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> It's just okay, that I'm not sure maybe in a couple help, days time. It would look cool. <laughs> maybe, maybe after 30 days. Maybe you make a really muscly arm <laughs> and then show Ezekiel and he'll be like, this guy gets it. One, one thing is bothering me though. Um, when I heard of the, of the list, the full list, I mean... We know that Drew was going to be responsible for carrying the last out, but why? Why, is, why were your names on that list? Who would have put it there? That, that's the part that scares me, and that's the part that I think I was very upset that I didn't hear about this before, because like, who would be interested in <clears throat> killing I mean, you, I can understand, but <laughs> the big one. Like, who would want to kill the big one? My hunch is Fado's name was on that list as an acquaintance of Miralar, so it seems. We did interfere with something the day we met. Yeah. We, out of a request from Mr. Spark Eye, we went and helped Mr. Fado from a couple of folks, and that may have put us on this list. I'm not sure, but... Yes, you seem to be running away from somebody that was definitely up to no good, and perhaps we made a few extra enemies that day. Well, Drew might be out of the picture, and it sounds like whoever preceded her was also dealt with by Mirlar, but whoever put the name on the list is still out there. Is the handwriting the same from the main list to the loose ends? It wasn't. It wasn't. A, it wasn't. Yeah, the same? It was like handwriting. The other was like print writing, right? Because maybe maybe Drew wrote the loose ends. Maybe it was Drew that yeah, got it's, you guys. It's it's similar, same. but also not as big. We got there before she wrote her about. Yeah. yeah, she didn't know. She never actually had the list. She yep. may have at one point. The other thing that I wanted to yeah, we don't know. <laughs> the other thing that I wanted to let you all know, uh, the other name on that list alongside your two was uh, Miss Loveless. Um, now, I have a hunch that she was added to that list for the same reason you two were added to that list. An acquaintance of Fado, I know that they had a relationship, or at least we, that's what we've come to understand. Um, I believe that... Uh, Not us. Her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that they all have yeah. a lot of relationships. She's a very attractive woman. But <laughs> oh, wow. I think... Big one. Lyra has done a very good job of... I'm a bit of a dog. <laughs> <laughs> at deceiving a lot of people. Um, the way she portrays herself, the way she talks and moves... It's is perfect. ...is all an act. She did smell um, like apples, right? <laughs> she seemed so sincere, though. So that it was, I, I believe, I'm able to read people pretty well. Um, those who have really subtle cues, things that most people don't pick up on. Uh, I noticed something, just a little, little twitch. The way that she kind of changed her, uh, kind of like. A twitch in her face um, during the conversation we had in Miralar's office. Um, something was off about it, and I watched her the rest of that conversation. The more that I watched for it, the more I looked for it, the more I saw it. She is much more than she's leading on. Um, I, I don't, I don't know for sure, but I have a feeling that she could be a very dangerous person, and there's a good chance that she has a lot more power in in this than than what it appears to be and, and what most people have understood her to be, which is that of just a sweet 
innocent mm -hmm. uh, you know, lounge worker who works for do Ezekiel. You think, do you think Ezekiel is using her, or is she using Ezekiel? I can't say for sure. Again, this is all just little things that I noticed, but... I noticed it, too. <laughs> those things, that what she was doing, that is a very high skill of what she was doing, the way that she was hiding her true intention. Someone, someone is very good at lying. Hmm. So I think as we move forward, um, we should be careful not only of Ezekiel, um, Ezekiel is very forward and menacing, just his visage, the way that he speaks, he is very commanding, authoritative. Um, so it's easy for him to be the face of all of this. I don't know if Lyra has as much power or more power, I'm not sure, but I think we need to be careful with, careful with her and not underestimate. And the fact that you came across something in that room uh, that I, I'm not even sure what exactly happened there, but something took hold of you um, and uh, and that was in her her chamber. Um, so there's something else going on there. Hmm. What happened that back there? We were trying to fight and then fucking giant oh metal God. thing came after us and then we started running and you guys fell behind what happened there this one is quite vain Again. yeah i walk in like we're like fighting things and trying to figure like get our way out of here and here's he's looking in the mirror in front of like a bunch of makeup what are you talking there was nothing around us no you're like, like mm, <laughs> we were I was entering a room, timing, you were busy opening another door, and then the next thing I knew, Kalthir was pulling reflection. me pulling me away, and we oh, well, found you guys were in trouble. We were dying to a giant metal scorpion. <laughs> it was actually rather impressive when you really think about it. I wish I had my notebook, I would have taken quite a few notes, but... <laughs> aye, aye, metal thing was not fun to deal with. Um, but but just imagine if I put that thing on the little one. <laughs> that would look freaky. It'd be very effective. <laughs> that would be cool. You died like six times. And not have an enjoyable experience there now. Really? Yes. I was fine. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> So the question then becomes, do we go to Ward 8 now? What are your thoughts? Well, there is the one small issue, which, I mean, I could attempt it myself, but we do need an operator for said device. Um, I think I know how it works, but I also don't really know how it works. It's probably best not to tempt it. Um, that's, prob that's what I'm thinking. Is Nipnor still in town, or did he leave with uh, Alastair? No, he was... Shit, where did we leave him? <laughs> I think last we saw him was at the warehouse. Well, we took him somewhere. I think we, he came with us to Ward 1, I believe. But then he may have gone out. I can try reaching out to him. If that's what we think is the best idea. He's just always in a grump. He's so moody. He's not pleasant to be around. <laughs> He's a negative Nelly. I think. I mean, he owes his life to us now, so I would hope that his attitude improved a little bit. You think he'll be a little bit nicer, use his manners, please and thank yous? I wouldn't go that far, but not being a <laughs> shit. Is... I guess that's an improvement. Have we heard from anyone in Ward 8? That could be I, starting point. I can room. reach out. Uh, try reaching out to Cassandra. Now, if she doesn't answer, it doesn't mean she's dead. <laughs> it's, is there anyone else that we should contact instead? Um, the professor is there. We should see what Lando's up to. Unhinged. 
Um, uh, sorry? What? Linda. We should see That's what she's up to. Who you were speaking about. I thought you were talking about your dog. Oh, he's the here. professor. <laughs> professor Linda is, yeah. is in there was also, Ward 8. There was your feline friend. Yes. Yes. Erdogan. Yeah. Erdogan. Erdogan. is going to... Yeah, sorry. He's yeah. going to get his spirit army so he can fight <laughs> the elephants <laughs> in, in the third movie. <laughs> <laughs> He's in this forbidden forest. Oh, that's the spider. So wait, <laughs> we talked about Aragon from Lord of the Rings or Aragon from the spider from <laughs> oh, that's a yeah. one. Yeah. 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 Either or. Yeah. They're preoccupied. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. Do you think that he would be better to reach out to? Mm. Honestly, I can't say. I think any of our contacts in Ward 8 could help us get in touch with, potentially. We Can just we do like a conference call? <laughs> no. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't do that. Um, I, I reached out to Cassandra last. Perhaps that's the, the right starting point. We can see what she point. has to say. Um, she would at least understand, you know, how this works. Yes. Or um, she won't be surprised by it, I suppose. Um, I guess I'll just try to... Um, find out the state of things there and let her know the plan is to begin heading that way um, assuming you know, the news is not for the worst you if could you be... have the opportunity oh, sorry oh, i was just going to say maybe she can provide us with an address of a hezerick and we exactly. could be on her way <laughs> if she has any information on hezerick we're able to fit that in the message that might be helpful as well it's the last time. word yeah hezerick silencio <laughs> <laughs> Um, what, will you have a limit on words that you can send in your message? I can only maintain a connection for so long uh, to convey, uh, so it, it limits the amount that I can send out. It's oh. weird, weird Who, who defines the, these limits? Uh, his mind, I think. It's, I don't really know. I haven't quite figured out how to... He's not very the good connection long enough to send more. More I've, than 140 characters? <laughs> yeah. <there's> a, <laughs> he can send I, a partial I, tweet. I don't know why that's the limit, but... Uh, <laughs> a a one-sentence tweet. Seems really unnecessary. <laughs> We're looking into doubling it. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you do threads? <laughs> no editing, though. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that's the worst. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, yeah, sure, I can reach out. Um, Sweet to the point. <laughs> All right. Tell her Astra says hi. Eyes roll back to the real people. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you see the real eyes. <laughs> I've just been like holding. Them. All right, so I will use um, sending to Cassandra. Mm -hmm. Pronounce Cassandra. Cassandra. No, but I can do awake mind yeah. with um, three. She can also read all writing, but these can. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Cassandra. How are things in Ward 8? Uh, we heard things may not be well. We're looking to head that way soon. Where is Ezra? <laughs> <laughs> Who is Ezra? No. no. Status report, Hezrek. <laughs> no. What is Hezrek? Heard name <laughs> Hezrek? Who that? Heard name Hezrek. Yeah. Oh. The question mark. Perfect. <laughs> it takes some time. She's dead. She's dead. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> She's like, the first couple of seconds are silence. And then you hear a voice, her voice, reply back. Things are bad. Uh oh. Sounds good. <laughs> Freedom Hall fell. Or freedom all those fallen. We're having to work with the iron cog. Things stable for now. Hezerick, high-ranking Razor? Don't know much more. I stopped counting words there, mm. so probably a little bit more, but 
No, you're roughly around it, actually. Yeah. Go yeah. A more. yeah, you can keep going. <laughs> yeah. Just like, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're another really really 40 really characters. Yeah. You only got yeah. to six Good words enough. there. Yeah. You only yeah. got to like 80 characters. So I cut out every word I didn't like to hear. So things are free. <laughs> uh, uh, with Iron Cog, we're stable. Hesrick <laughs> equals right here. <laughs> so, yeah, I relay that information. She says things are bad. Yeah. But she's alive. She is alive. Okay. Um, That's half full. I, I don't know That's more what than that full. means for the rest of Freedom Hold, though. She <laughs> said. Half full. Um, <laughs> it's overflowing. <laughs> yeah, but, but Jeff is dead. Jeff is dead. Jeff is uh, the kid. Yeah. Yeah. You're fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Do that kid. After the whole Well, you didn't manage to hit Freedom Hold is gone, apparently. Uh, the, her and whoever else is working with the Iron Cog. She did not sound too happy about that. Um, her knows the name Hazarek. Uh, said he's a high ranking or was a high ranking uh, razor. Other than that, doesn't really know too much. Um, That's we a have, win in my books. We have confirmation that he was there and apparently was high ranking. Um, oh. So maybe we'll be able to find out more, uh, perhaps. I mean, I believe we've heard that the razors are no more, but maybe we can find those who know or are willing to, to talk or have heard things. Well, if he really was a higher ranking razor and a former associate of Miralar slash betrayer, he probably would had the most interest in seeing all the people's not less killed. So, out of the three people that Mirlar wants us to hunt, my vote is to going after him. And maybe we get this thing to work. <laughs> that, yes, I mean, we do have technically a free pass into Ward 8 with the letter that we got, the contract we got. Um, we obviously would have to show it to the Iron Cog there, but I believe we shouldn't be held up going into Ward 8, assuming it's safe to do so. I uh, We don't I, really know. Cassandra didn't mention where she's currently at. No, um, but if they're working with the Iron Cog, they probably have an idea. I wouldn't mind giving this a try. I mean, we would have to, again, either I turn it on, preferably not, or we try and find an operator. Before we go, we're on the way. Who could we ask? Well, we can make a sign and just see if anybody <laughs> applies. Is that a common thing here in Schema? I've seen it once or twice. My father says they're not usually good people. Hmm. But so I, I think guess. Ward 8 you know, with Ward 8 as well. is probably my... Well, when I look at it threefold, we don't know where... The dwarf that owned this place went. I can't Gildrak. think of his name. Thank you. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, I could ask my uncle if he knows something else. Could on the way out. It could I'd help. Be. Although, um, I think we also need to think about exactly what our plan is with regards to Ezekiel and this contract. Um, I mean, you you said it straight to his face. We're not contract killers. No. Um, Hazarek at least is somebody who worked with both Ezekiel and the Razors. Sounds like not a very great person. Um, so, though again, I don't want to just bring him to his execution. Um, Daldrock owed Ezekiel money and fled the city because of that. I'm going um, against a lot of people owed him money. It's not the worst like, thing to run away from your dead. He may already be get out of the city. We but for know. him to have been singled out, it's probably quite the sum. Oh, I imagine, I so. imagine. And on the third point, I... All I'm going to say is if Drew wanted us dead, she would have done it by now. I feel like there's many opportunities she could have... Picked us off one by one, or potentially even just encountered us head on and won. Um, she's not the the most lovely person I've ever met, but um, I mean, she almost did kill the lad. Uh, but, but she didn't. That's what matters. <laughs> <laughs> she's held a knife in her throat twice. Yeah. So you know, in, killed me once. in some cultures, <laughs> that's a sh sign of respect and love. I guess um, there's an improvement. Maybe. First time she actually stabbed you, second time she didn't. So maybe she was just was trying some... to give you a shave. Yeah. I think she actually secretly likes her, but don't tell us <laughs> that. Um, 
But yeah, I agree. There's, I there's, there's a like weird that. energy going there on. Was there was a weird, with, weird energy. With the whole cold, throwing yeah, the coat and yeah, all of she that. She seemed to have a twinkle in her eye when she was running for her life. <laughs> um, I saw that too. <laughs> um, but I think, I think we can kind of ward it at least until we get more information about who or where Hezurik is. It's a starting point. We can hit two eggs with one chicken and <laughs> and try and bring the device down there. Um, I don't know. I think I heard my father say that once. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. I read that one. <laughs> well, you think that... But it has to be unanimous. Do you think that Drew would help us? Uh, possibly, but I feel like maybe getting in direct contact with her face to face if he is watching us that might not be the best idea that's i agree but we don't need to get it no i'm face just, to face. I'm just like saying. we have a, a friend here that can contact people mysteriously that's true i've been working on it as well well watch this did you get that? Are you doing it? Did, did you speak to her? <laughs> what did, did you speak say? to me? I tried. Oh. Just the... Uh... Oh, wait, sorry. Are we aware of the scry? Did you let us know? Yeah. 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 Before, uh, Before we yeah, slept, he said, he said it was outside watching us. Yeah. And, and then, then he got naked and fell asleep. Here. If it's... Uh, I mean, uh, scrying... You may hear us. You're not 100% sure that the spell was a scry. Yeah, we don't you know. You just know it was divination magic. Yeah. yeah. He has so that, I said that was that some well. form of watching some, magic. Something is here. We I don't know what it is. There's a chance we'll just have to be careful about what we're saying here. What mm-hmm. if we send her a conversing card? Do you mean days? Do we yeah. only have one left? No, we have oh, a whole we bunch. have two. Remember? I only, bought, I only bought two. I got two. They were a lot of money. I thought we bought like 30. No, two, two pieces. <laughs> Will those find their way to anyone? Did we not use one on... Who knows that name? Ready? Uh, it theoretically will. Oh, yeah. I know well, you... I, I know you... Ass. I knew you used one... Before we bought Before. One. I thought we used... I'll figure that out later. I'll figure that out later. Oh, yeah. but we at the least, we at least bought two, but... Yeah, I can't remember if we I used got one. two. Yeah, okay. Do you think there's anything that we could send uh, to Hezurek? Let's send him some mashed to potatoes. Come, to reach out to us. That's an interesting thought. Do you want to set up a trap? It would have to be pretty it's enticing. An interesting conversation, but I'd imagine he's probably since defecting from Ezekiel. Our he's DM is been, laughing over there. He's probably been quite on guard to things like that. He would probably always assume it's a trap. Um, well, he doesn't know the state of Galen, does he? What if we say we have Galen? We also don't know if they if he knows Galen or even knows Galen by name. By that name. What if we send? He him, might be like, "Who the fuck what is Galen?" <laughs> what if we send Galen's pistol and say, "This is what could happen to you if you don't come talk to us right now." I think he'll just go in hiding. I thought that was a perfect trap. <laughs> Wait, have you got his pistol? I have his uh, pistol. He, he has his pistol. Oh, you got his pistol. I don't Let's understand, see. sure. I go over my head. Oh, you didn't let me see it last time. <laughs> <laughs> what do I see? It looks like a smaller version of your gun. No in good. many ways. It looks very different from <laughs> the design that the big one has. Um, it's got like a little bit of a long... Uh, it's almost like a revolver. Like a six-shooter. has like a long barrel. It's made of this... Blackish blue gunmetal, almost similar like a little to bit the vials. <laughs> to, the, to the alchemical, yes, yeah, similar to the <laughs> open, like alchemical explosive vial. Um, there were like two bullets left in the chamber. Um, it's got like a nice design of like waves along the hilt, hilt, yeah, yeah. Uh, hmm. handle. Yeah. Waves in the handle. Almost like where the grip would be, like the grip has like lines drawn through it that look like waves splashing against one of the sides. Yeah, Yeah, Alistair told us that story. Alistair told us the pirate story again, right? So let's call him up, see what he's doing. This is this is fine craftsmanship and this metal. Do I know this metal? Do I know that metal? Make a smithing tools. That's a thing. Do I know no I'm just kidding, I don't I don't know. What even is a metal? Nothing. Uh, 15. Do you feel like your proficiency <laughs> bonus plus? Just roll the d20. It'd be Dax for him. <laughs> or in. You, you oh, use oh, like your inter wisdom for this. 
Really? really? All, all tools are usually yeah, dex, though. Because you're not, like, actually making... In that whatever, case, right? like, you're using... mine's a 19. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty Ooh. good. Uh, 22. 22. You've heard of it. Um, I believe it's called... Black man. I have a name for Marin here. <laughs> Just black and blue. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Steel. Metal. <laughs> 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 uh, that was not going to go well. Blue Cobalt. Blue Cobalt. Navy. Blazer Travel. What if we put a piece of cheese? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I want to know my head's rocket sack. That's what gnomes like, right? <laughs> yes, actually. If I've learned anything about gnomes, <laughs> they do like cheese. They love cheese. <laughs> we can go test it out on Spark Guy. It's, it would probably get the trapped. reason that you identify parts of it is that it definitely is an alloy of cobalt. And you recognize that, that blue part blue of it immediately, cobalt. but you do not know what the yeah. other material is. Um, it's not a material that you've ever worked with before. Something is giving it almost like a darker, blackish, almost like hue to it that it would be really hard to get in cobalt. So cobalt is very bright, very vibrant. Um, something is almost muting the color down. There's like also small flecks with like your eye, particularly as you look at it closely. There's small flecks of like reddish um, texture to, in it within the metal itself. It's very unique metal. You don't immediately recognize. Is it, it a matte finish? <laughs> Not really. This a little a bit. Very, in some places. This is a very different alloy. I mean, you, if you see the bluish hue, it, it looks like. Looks like cobalt. Like Ooh, if you look here at my hammer, I have the cobalt sign from the blue hammer. So oh. I'm pretty used to cobalt, but this blackish. I don't know what's giving it this hue, and it's got some flex to it. And usually black metals like this, they are they have a high content of sulfur in them, but. Well, sulfur makes writing? it brittle. Sulfur, sulfur doesn't make it flexible. So well, it's I, no good then. I don't know. <laughs> it's Maybe it's it a beautiful weapon. <laughs> um, the other thing that you notice is that while okay. most of your, like your gun, the firing mechanism and things are made of a different material, right? Almost like a goldish version of electrosteel, yeah. similar in hue. And the, your firing mechanisms are almost all made of that. Um, this gun is purely made of this one metal. Cool. There's no other embellishments or parts. Aside from writing? like a little bit of like a leather on the handle, but I don't think was. there's just these waves. Can you read waves? Those are. She's, she's not very good. At <laughs> yeah. it. I am really good <laughs> at you guys. Here, love. I mean, if you want, you can have it. I mean, I I've know. been in the market for <laughs> a pistol <laughs> upgrade. I, I have no purpose for it. I just happen to pick it up. I will uh, have it for now. I mean, I have I have thunder, so I don't have. My my current one doesn't have a, yeah, and a I have name. Cynthia, so it's all good. Should I be naming my weapons? All the, all the special weapons have a name. I will call this Electro Steel. <laughs> <laughs> Blue steel. Blue steel. Blue steel. Oh, I will call it blue steel. <laughs> oh, I'm calling this blue steel. That's a fine name. Thank you. I think you might fits. you might want to uh, reload it, lad, because uh, it's, <laughs> yeah. what watch that watch yeah, that. Oh. There's still two I, bullets I saw, in the chamber. I saw Alistair do it once. I've my hands might be a little too big to spin in, but. <laughs> Okay. And I will take my existing Electro Steel basic bitch pistol and I'll put this one in my holster. What do you do with your other pistol? I just put it on the bag. fireplace. Oh, okay. <laughs> just leaving it Does behind. it have a name? Is it anything special or is it just a pistol? If we are staying here for another <laughs> 15 to 30 minutes, I will identify it. Or a tune? But that's what I mean, yeah. It's not an attunement or anything, but it does have a couple of special properties. Ooh. Um, the first property... It shoots water. 
Yes! <laughs> but then I can use my arm to freeze it. <laughs> the first property is that it's loaded six. After six shots, you do have to reload it. It's the revolver. Um, how much damage does your regular gun do? A D10. Okay, then this does the same. Okay. Um, but you can use this pistol as a spell casting, like an arcane focus. Mm. Okay, so player question. Uh, with my current wrench arcane focus, as an artificer, I can uh, use an infusement, infuse, or whatever the fuck they're infusion. called, infusion, to make my pistol magical in a sense where I can use my intelligence modifier. Does that mean I don't have to have that infusion? No, you still need to have that. Damn. <laughs> you can just, That's instead of needing, pistol. like, if you don't have your wrench on you, you yeah. can use this as an arcane focus. Interesting. It's interesting. It's I like, will never not have my wrench, but interesting. <laughs> as you look at it, it's weird. It, like, somehow you can channel the magic in your arm using this pistol, and I will give you creative license to figure out how you do that. <laughs> Sorry, say that again? You can channel the magic in your arm that you would normally take a wrench Through and, like, twist pistol? it. You can use your pistol to channel the. So I can just shoot my arm. And... <laughs> I'll figure something. Uh, if you, it, you it, use it as an arcane focus. Okay, I'll figure something out. <laughs> you hold the gun with that metal arm. Yeah, if you hold the gun with that arm, <laughs> the magic shoots out of the gun. That's why I have the gun yeah. in the arm. So yeah, like this and it comes up. It'll be like a, <laughs> it'll be like a turny thing. You have to turn it sideways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta go for the kill shot. Excellent. You, you never know. You might be able to curve the bullet with that. <laughs> <laughs> now I have a gun named Blue Steel. Let's fucking go. Nice. Who, who can we ask? You recognize that when uh, Galran was using it, right? He was using it as a means to fire off spells. spells. Like he was so using it to fire off out. like okay. magic missiles and fireballs. Follow up question: like With that infused thing, I can magically load my gun with bullets, so yes. I don't manually have to do it and use waste of bonus action. That can still work on the six shooter. That can shooter. still work with it. That's fucking cool. All right, cool. Good to know. You may want to give it a good clean. Can I fan it? That's <laughs> how he was firing off his. Uh, oh, we gotta come it? up with some crazy shit. Oh, whoa, whoa, stop that! that I guess he fires the two bullets that were. <laughs> no, I, I haven't got to two yet. He's pulling the trigger. He's yeah, just been I'm like just, stroking. Like <laughs> oh, I'm just exploring it. Is this thing loaded? <laughs> Why would you hit me alone? I just told you, oh, lad. There was two bullets in the in Let's the chamber. Take I have a magic trick that I can make. I have a magic trick where my bullets automatically load. I'm more, give me like five more artificer levels and I could probably do it for you too. <laughs> Reach me, lad. I will try. Should probably clean that gun off. It's probably sticky with hairspray. <laughs> my my trunk grabs a towel and just Cool. Anyway, where were we? I'm trying to see if we can trap Hazara. <laughs> or Hazara. Well, if you remember, um, Alistair used uh, muffins, I believe it was, or, or <laughs> cupcakes. Send him mashed potatoes, but they're poison. Wow, that's a really good idea. Now we know if he likes <laughs> mashed potatoes. Who doesn't? That's a good point, too. Fair point. All I know is we gotta do something with mashed potatoes. <laughs> we gotta find him first. How do we find them? Well, you know that floaty thing that we think was something to do with divination, and we think, I don't know, maybe somebody was looking at us with it? Maybe? I don't know what it was. Do we have something like that? You have those balls that you can make shine really bright. Can you make it so that... Um, I haven't thought of it. It would take a long time to experiment with, but... Um... Maybe Clanko has something we could use? Yeah, we should go to Clanko's. That fucker. I don't like him very much either, but... Yeah. I just rolled a die. He wanted to steal from me the last time. Mm. That's I don't a trust bunch him. of branding everywhere. Like, he probably won't sell us something unless we do, like, a Clanko's tattoo on our head. I may have information on Hazard. They're both, like, building crazy things. 
That's true. Well, whatever the decision is, we should think about making our way towards Ward 8. It's probably going to take a little while to get down there. Should we start with your your family shop? I, I we can go and talk to my uncle. But I thought that that was to locate the owner of this establishment, and we might not want to might lead us sentence down. him to death. But it's probably a good idea. I mean, I wouldn't mind going to my uncle to ask about some upgraded armor because this one's starting to stink. Um, oh, do you think he could upgrade my corset? I also think if we are setting out and we're leaving the golden anvil behind for a little bit, Perhaps we use the rest of today or even just the morning to do some personal errands. I have a few things I wouldn't mind taking care of before we have to set out on saving Archmere's life. I mean, I would love to craft myself a nice iron chest plate, but that usually takes longer than 30 days. That, <laughs> so that might be a little that, That's not going to work, lad. I think uh, by the end of that, our friend here would be... I actually just wanted to send a letter to my father. It wouldn't take more than an hour or two yeah, to go. You want one of these? Oh, actually... oh, wait, don't, I don't want to use those. I've, I've been sending letters my whole life. It's, it's no inconvenience. With all the stuff that was going on and the like grand reopening of War 3 and whatever, um, did we hear anything about... Uh, is like the whole Ward 4, Ward 1 shenanigan thing still going on? Or do we like not know? I'm just wondering if Maybe that we came come back half step. At the at the gala, you would have heard conversations in general. Um, there's still animosity. Um, I'm mostly wondering if that gate is still closed. Uh, there were people in War Three, like at the gala, who were our toasters, who were from Ward One. Yeah, though they may have gone the way we went. Just like down there. Uh, the only thing I was uh, thinking is that. Well, so Ward 4 has two gates into Ward 1, right? Like the one that you took, or not into Ward 1, but through Ward 5. Yeah, Ward 5 was the, where. Yeah. Ward like, 5 was the route that you took. Then, yeah. yeah it's From just 4, like, you can either go up into like Ward 2, and then go in into Ward 1. Yeah. Or you can go down. Oh, wait, Ward, ward, five. ward 2 uh, Ward two and Ward 4 are connected? Uh. Yes. Hold on, I need to double check. That might be one of the lines I did not draw on my little miniature map here. Somebody drew a really detailed map. <clears throat> um, there is a wall. There is a gate in that wall. It just might not be near. <laughs> no, that's fine. I was just, that's, that's fine. I just wanted to. Okay. It's like that's closer fine. to almost the ledge. Just yeah. in like a little recess. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> A detailed map. Yeah. <laughs> that looks kind of like mine. Um, so <laughs> mine. What I was. <laughs> mine looks like a honeycomb. Nice. nice. It's probably more closely what it is. Um, what I was thinking potentially is that we could uh, go th go through Ward One on oh. our way down. If we did, then potentially we can stop there. I think. I believe we last. We're with Nipner in Ward 1, although he headed off to wherever he was going, potentially Ward 5. I don't actually remember. But I didn't write down where he went, but... He said he was going back to his apartment in Ward 4. Which we North know where that point. is. Well, we do yeah, know where that is. is. It's yeah. above the black... Yeah, black that's dog. the one tavern. One of those taverns. That one that's, that it's sells it's the basic, mushroom drink. It's just down the road from Nero No, it wasn't that one. No? I don't think so. Oh, cool. came after him? I think so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, arguably, really his, smart. arguably yeah. his part was done in it. Above right. the Black Ox. Yeah, Black Ox. That's what it was. The Black Ox. We we could. I mean, I don't want to inconvenience anybody. Anybody would be nice to stop in. It's been quite a while since we've seen my father, and grab some things from my shop, and then head out. trying to remember Clanko when we were there yeah. we asked about potions and he was like that's that ain't me and yes. then said go to but did he say ward three or did he say um, I'm trying to remember which because he, he told us to go said, somewhere else and I forget where he said um ward three is there's definitely some people here that could sell potions okay um ward five like yeah. market ward definitely has some places mm -hmm. that can sell potions 
Yeah, that's what he said. Word five, set seven, word three, and word five. Okay. Well, we can always look around. With well, we word should, five, there should definitely stock up before we do anything. There's sundries and supplies. The Red Street Bazaar itself, where you had almost like uh, you had camped at the or you, the first time you came in here, you stayed at the Savvy Merchant, which was right across from the Red Street Bazaar, which is like this long, almost like open street right. market with a bunch of different shops and booths that are set up there. Right. Okay. It is the center of trade for the entire city, essentially. That's five. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think the Mr. Red Street Bazaar in particular. Yeah. I don't think Mr. Mirlar will. If be you want upset. anything from outside the city. That's the place you're gonna find it. Right. Well, I, I probably would still like to pay my uncle a visit. I mean, sure, uh, definitely. Was, it's on the way actually towards I where was, we need to go. I was saving all of these like maces and great axes <laughs> so that I could smelt them for the, our project, but we did fine with just the cart. Yep. And my my hammer is already forged, so I have no need for another big weapon. Sure. So maybe I can exchange for Something. some armor with my uncle i don't know if this is going to get me much but oh it's worth a try by the way do you have that other extra great axe uh, from the first big fucker we came? i think we smelted it no not that one remember. you still you had it in your like the like half the ogre thing. Yeah. yeah whatever it was i thought we said we smelted that in the car Sure, let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do remember bringing that up, and I think you said with that and the car, we would have enough to smelt down and make the machine. Oh, I forgot. But, okay. <laughs> I was probably in my uncle when you were. Uh, yeah, I think I think unfortunately we smelted it down. Weapons. Did Galarin have a sword? Or he did have a sword. Sick. Do you have Galarin's? Or are you still holding on to that sword, Galarin? I don't think I. Was it you or it? someone? I, did, I, I took the shield. Me, look, you sure shield. you don't have oh, it? Maybe I have yeah. it. <laughs> Midnight longsword. Somebody I, has it. I think oh, okay. you might. Yeah, it's think probably. Yeah. Oh, did I ever? Just, I don't know if there's anything. Have you got a sword? The one on like I, your back was so right there, lad. In your, in oh. Your <laughs> oh, this one? Yeah. Maybe. Um, I guess I'll take some time. Then. I don't know. Do I notice anything special about it? I think we should definitely write a list of supplies we need because if we get caught against a giant metal scorpion again, I want to be prepared. <laughs> um, that's definitely magical. I, it no, seems uh, more and more. Is that something I can identify? <laughs> I think you guys have already. I, like, I we would have already. identified that already. Pretty sure you guys have already identified it. Okay. It's called a midnight longsword. I'm pretty I sure you identified it before. A midnight longsword. We can look that up as we take a break. Oh! Go to the washroom. Yeah. Okay, stuff like so that. Will, well, we're about to yeah. set out on an adventure! Yay! <laughs> Figure out where the path leads next. Oh boy, I'm actually kind of scared. Alright, we'll bye. be back.
and welcome back. Uh-oh. So, as you all gather your things and make your way out of the Golden Anvil, what's the state you're leaving the place in? Are you locking it down? Are you closing it? Are so you that's what I was going to ask. Guard dog? Are Let's you trash it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Definitely not leaving the place down. Definitely <laughs> not leaving the guard dog because we're going to be gone for a while. So, professor's coming with me, but. Um, when we wrote up the contract, did she give us we can use this as we need it, or was there a time frame we had to be out? Or it was indefinite, I think. It was indefinite. Okay. Provided but you do recall working. that Ezekiel Merrill yes. mentioned the place. So what I will say to that is, I will take the majority of things that are good valuables. Like I will take my pistol because I'll give that to my father, and he can work on it or do whatever the fuck he wants. But in terms of like scrap. Excess metal and things like that. Not steak back to my uncle. Yeah, anything we want to, like, I would pack up, essentially. And let's leave a note here at the door, property of the iron will. <laughs> we can leave one piece of paper tapes to it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that won't go anywhere. Um, but yeah, I, I think, like, if the big one's treating this like his shop, he would probably pack it up to the stuff that he needs to take with him, but he would still... Some somewhat believe that it's still in our possession, like we still have access to it. Okay. So he would he wouldn't just leave it unlocked. Like I would lock it up and yeah. yeah, like there would be. What would you do with some of the like empty boxes and parts and things that you? Well, he said we can bring some of the parts to his own in order to build the project. Yeah, because there might be things here that, like for example, maybe like a spare wire that would only be used in like a rest, uh, repulsor cylinder or something like that, right? Like uh, parts that might be identifiable. If if there's extra parts that we might, that I think we might need that are carryable, I would take with me in okay. case something fucks up with a repulsor cylinder. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what? Things like spare metal we can bring to his uncles. I can also ask my uncle to store a crate of our belongings sure. or something. I trust him. Yeah, like boxes of like metal or anything mm -hmm. used that are like the, the structure of it. I don't think we need to, like we've built it. It's either going to work or it's not. But things like wires that we might need extra of, I'll take with me. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, structural stuff, we can see if, like you said, he can store it or if he need, has use for it, whatever. Uh, I'm bringing as many apples as I can carry. <laughs> you can't carry all of them. That's why I said as many as I can. I'll leave behind the rest. I'll, I'll also try to take yeah. some of the potatoes that I asked for. They'll and probably the go barley. Bad. They'll probably go bad, so I'll leave some outside. I mean, even the apples—they've been around for like about a week without really a refrigerator. Oh, <laughs> apples <laughs> sit fine for at least two weeks. Um, I'll probably, put, even if they're rotting, I'll put them outside. Mm -hmm. Animals or those street youths can eat them. <laughs> Oh, I wish I had another day. I could try to brew us some cider. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that we need to live today. I um, guess the we life is in a hurry not to we die. We should probably. By the time you're done cleaning up and grabbing all the goods and packing them in a crate to take out, it's probably a little into like the early afternoon. Do you start making your way up the, up the street? Is there anything you all want to do first? Well, I was going to say, while you're taking everything to your uncle and going to speak with him, I may go try to find a, um, a shop that sells potions. Oh, that's a great idea. If anybody wanted to join. Um, I'm going to stay and clean up the shop a little bit. It's respectful to clean up the shop. Um, but I can send you some money in case uh, you find extra. I can actually give you about 100 gold and then buy something? what... Supplies for everybody. For? Um, just things that I would. I don't want to die. Okay. Um. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Is a hundred a, a lot? I. I don't. Uh, that's probably a couple potions. I would think. I oh, mean, that's more than I have. I have thirty-five gold. <laughs> oh, th this I'm isn't. Ju poor. This isn't just for me. I mean, and I'll pull out. You'll see. I pull out a potion of healing. I'll be like, maybe just a couple more of these for the group. Sure. Um, sure. This is definitely an expense that I'm more than happy covering. Especially him, I mean, if he's going to die in 30 days, he probably needs to drink, like, ton of them. <laughs> so yeah, I'll give you 100 gold. We're just going to weekend at Bernie's you for the rest yeah. of the campaign? Yeah. <laughs> if you don't use it, I'll take it back, man. but... Uh, <laughs> it told me I'm not allowed to remove money, so I will keep it now. Um, yeah, I mean, I was just going to look to see if there was anyone selling potions and see if I can find anything. I uh, figure I might as well multitask. I I mean, I, I can't help much with this. 
can't really help carry a lot of that. I'm not very strong, and I don't speak much to blacksmithing, that, per se. You, you are the experts. Do you need any additional equipment or repairs? No, I'm, I'm good with what I have. I, um, I've taught myself to do self-repairs on, on my clothing and my armor, so I think I'm alright. Thank you. Alright. Maybe Astro should go sure. with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Timon, can you yeah, ask your uncle? Does he work with corsets? He works with uh, electro steel. <laughs> <laughs> you probably don't have time for adjustments either. No, like my current one is fine, but what about like leather electro steel? Like a sexual one? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, like a, an iron fucking thing. <laughs> like, like a little combination of both like leather and electro steel corset. I saw mostly electro steel as, but I can ask. Okay. I can also make you something out of electro steel. Just an option. Oh, okay. <laughs> what do you need? Do not trust my no, abilities with electro steel. No, the electro steel. Do you want like an electro steel plate? Maybe. That's but, really easy to make. But but then I want it to be covered with leather. So like, see how but, I have my. But well, then can do that. But then you know how to. No. I'm not as great with leather. Wear a plate like are you? <laughs> you just put it on and then... <laughs> well, it's a little clunky. Mm. You need a little bit of practice. With that. Oh well, that's fine. I can practice because we've been getting into a lot of trouble. But okay, here's the thing. See, I have my suspenders and then I have my corset, and it's like. All right, already. Like that's that's enough. Why don't you combine them both, and then make the corset like plated? Well, you know? plate, plate. You need practice. It's different than that. Well, oh, I can make that I, in ten minutes. I can okay. I can ask to see if my uncle has something. Easy. So you want a corset, is that right? Yeah. Easy. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'll ask. A corset, and then maybe I can get your help with like some like. Attaching the suspenders to it, making it pretty. Oh, make uh, she's uh, again, going on again the whole clothing stuff. I can make it in about I'm ten minutes. More a tailor of linens than than leather. In the time you've talked, I've actually made it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and by the way, Taiman put on his old armor again. Oh yeah, that's that's very yeah, important. Like, I'm gonna actually he packed everything. Mm -hmm. I'm armor. actually going to leave my purple cloak in the drawer that I put it in. And I'm going to leave wearing the black cloak that he stitched the symbol and the purple thing on the inside. Oh, I thought you did that on the purple one. No, <laughs> no, no, no. It was, was, it was, on, the, it was on the black cloak okay. that you stitched the, the okay. moon symbol thing with the purple in it yeah. inside the black one, so I always had it with me. But I am going to leave my purple cloak in there. And then I, I look like a badass. I'm wearing no no short shorts. I got my half plate stuff back on chainmail, whatever. Oh, man, I don't mind this piece of cloth here that I wore yesterday, so I'll take with with me. So I folded and I put together with Anya's scarf in my back. Actually, that's stupid. But we're going to my dad's house. I keep forgetting we're going there. I'll take it with me and then, <laughs> and then I'll leave it there. <laughs> right. Yeah, that'd, that'd be dumb. I yeah. thought we were going straight toward it, but no, we're going. Oh, what are you drawing? Yeah, oh, I was like, like a hot dog to his uncle as well. <laughs> <laughs> Is that not a hot dog? <laughs> Shut one? up! Well, it's up to you. Astro's um, very weird shaped. <laughs> I, I, I think Astro and I are going to go look for somewhere selling potions or things of that like. I'm not sure if you wanted to, to join or if there was anything you wanted us to look for. Uh, it's not what I was going to say. <laughs> Draw later. Look like a hot dog. <laughs> I should think I have two potions appealing on me. Hot dog. So. Yeah, I have one on me, but it's just like, based on what our kind of mission is, who knows when we're going to get back to uh, a ward to buy things. and Player talk, you guys really need to give me a potion, guys. <laughs> I only have one. That's why I'm buying it. I just said we're buying some for the group. I do have two. Yeah, we're just potion. buying extra. It's a group effort. Uh, four of money, four of <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> I'm probably I'm gonna head to the to the blacksmith, but um, here's and I'll give you guys yeah, 100, 100 gold. <laughs> just like if we can, if you find something that's useful that you think is useful, please please get it. Sure. So we'll you find you something pretty. <laughs> so are you coming along, lad? Yep. 
All right. All right, big one. Are you coming or are you staying to finish packing? Uh, I'll probably stay and just clean up a bit. Respectful to at least polish up the, the stuff that we've dirtied over the course of the last week. So, okay. Should if you we... need, oh, go ahead. If you need anything, please just let me know. It's just up the road, right? It's not too ah, fast. It's just yep. behind the shop and yep. straight over. Should we just plan to meet at the gate to Ward Four? We in, could do in that. A bit of time. Say two hours. Sure. Yeah. Give, or, give or take. Say your goodbyes to this lovely place. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so yeah, I guess that's what we're doing. They're going shopping, and we're going. I'm um, cleaning up, and they're going blacksmithing. All right. Let's go that way first. <laughs> <laughs> Start making your way down the street. <laughs> Heading up the street towards the main <laughs> plaza. Uh, it's the ward is mostly back to the liveliness that it had before, um, but you can definitely see at least like half of the power, like at least half of the lights, the street lights are dimmer. Everything right. is like a little bit, even though it's starting to get back. Yeah. There's definitely a sign of some hardships that have occurred that they've had to deal with they're kind of like of, either conserving power or distributing it yeah to like certain places and not every place yep. um as you make your way to the puzzle <laughs> you definitely find like similarly to how it had been last night um uh, there's a lot of people just kind of loitering around the central plaza in near like the large statue fountain that isn't running um the bridge that goes across the river um a lot of people not really doing much. And funnily, funnily, <laughs> um, <laughs> kind of reminds you of what the vibe was at Freedom Hall in some ways. Oh, no. Just yeah, no. a lot of people with not much else to do. Right. That's sad. There's all the power in their phones and they don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you... You're looking for... So specifically, first, I'm definitely... I'm looking for uh, a place that, whether it's like a alchemist or it's something, just some, like some place that looks like they would potentially sell, sell potions. Um, how exactly do you go about looking for that? Do you so, ask around? Do you... Uh, just his eyes. <laughs> Where is the potion shop? I, I, I spin my head 360 as I'm walking. <laughs> Um, oh god. So it's no, like a, for like uh, yeah, Google Maps given how I <laughs> <laughs> given how I've seen the city kind of operate through like the other wards, there's a lot of like signage and, and stuff and there's like things in front like, of so for mostly. the first little bit I'll definitely just be looking to see if I find anything that's like that would indicate this is probably something. You walk around and maybe it's just because the lights are dimmer, the signs are harder to read, you're having to like slow down and look at each of the individual signs as you're walking by just to figure out what they are. I guess you have dark vision, so that's not really a problem for you. Um, much dark vision. Much dark vision. <laughs> um, 6,000 feet. But still, yeah. you're, it's a pretty big ward and you don't really know where to even start looking. There's a lot of houses, a lot of... Good thing you have a social bunny and Astro with you. <laughs> We do not find a shop in your first little walkabout. Yeah. While we're walking, I'm also looking for maybe like a like bakery or um, a place with like little trinkets and stuff. He's gonna try to run that with bacon. Yeah. <laughs> you notice off in the distance. It's not a bakery per se. Um, you notice a larger sort of building, almost like a larger shop or a warehouse of some sort. So you immediately are kind of gravitate towards that, and you, as you're approaching and you're following, you can see a sign above it that just says "Smokestack Arms and Supplies." Ooh! Ooh. Can we go in here? <laughs> it's probably the biggest establishment in that you walk past. Maybe <clears throat> smokestack. What? Hundred feet across. It's like, like a single level smokestack arms and supplies. That's the one. Um, it looks very Spartan. It looks almost like a warehouse in many ways. Um, or at least a repurposed warehouse. Um, you also notice as you are approaching it that behind it 
is a very large building. What you thought was actually almost the wall of the war or something. Mm -hmm. um, it's like tall, maybe like three or four stories tall. Uh, it's just a solid one. wall behind it with concrete and steel and bricks. Is there any signage? You'd have to walk around the block to see. Um, uh, if we do like a quick little... Do, 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 do. Uh, as you circle around the block, you can actually see at the opposite, like up in front of you, what looked like you th you hear it first a loud rumbling noise as a train of sorts <gasps> rolls past cool. into deeper into the ward. Um, it's not emitting any smoke or anything. Um, there's probably three or four, five, six carts. <laughs> Uh, attached to it, they're rolling by. Um, and on the corner of the wall, almost heading in that direction, it just says Gear Fist Terminal. Gear Fist? Fist? Gear Fist Terminal. Gear Fist Terminal? Yeah. Nothing over here. We should uh, we should go into the supply shop. Okay. You noticed the loud ring. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> It was loud. It yeah. was something unlike anything else that you've ever seen before. Stands. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Those giant, almost twice your height, carts of moving goods mm -hmm. magically along these strange tracks on the ground. I mean, the city makes no sense to me. There's right. <laughs> metal animals walking around, and <laughs> metal humans, and yeah. What's not to understand? Makes no sense to me. What, are, what even is this? Come on, come on, come on. Open the doors. <sighs> what is kind of like the general goods that is? There's a lot of uh, like disparate boxes and supplies, ladders uh, set up on one side. There's like shovels and picks on one side. Um, it's very much like mining goods, mining mm -hmm. supplies. Um, there's a lot of ropes. A general store for uh, mining A lot city. of. Uh, <laughs> Is there like a front desk? Uh, a lot of torches. Um, there's not really a front desk, but there is like somebody walking 2, about. <laughs> there's somebody walking about, and as you kind of look around to see anybody in here, the entire like possibly hundred foot large like structure is relatively empty of people. Hmm. There's not many people here. I just walked straight uh, up to that person. <laughs> there's just one person walking in. Yeah. That person is about half your height. Okay, I walk over to them. You walk over to them and they kind of turn around and look at you. My, you're tall. And as they look up at you, you can see almost like a dark greenish skin, long ears, oh, uh, like, nose ring running. hanging from his nose. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's wearing just right, these time, like time just these overalls. His feet are bare. He's just kind of God, like, standing and yeah. looks up at you. Can I help you with something? Uh, yes, do you trade uh, potions for money here? <laughs> potions? Um, I got some healing kits, some uh, bandages, some first aid kits, some tourniquets, some... I'm specifically looking for the liquid potion. Uh, it's not really my purview. Uh, it's gonna be a bit hard to find. There's only really one shop around here that sells them and it's closed. Oh. Uh, when where, does it open? Where is that one? Uh, it's up, uh, it's up actually that way and it points off in a direction. Is that the French uh, accent I hear? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, a, I it's a that way. <laughs> uh, it's called, uh, it's called, called it Uzukar's Herbs yeah. and Fungi. Yeah. Uh, uh, the what? Herbs and Fungi? Uzukar's. Why is it close? Uh, the owner kind of died. <gasps> ah. Steal oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have no one to take what? over so the establishment? What is it? Nobody happen? needs it then. So, kind of a reclusive sort. One of those real pale dwarves. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Is he one of the guys we saw down? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Employee of the month. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Who was that why, again? Why was he working the climatology for me? <laughs> um, Maybe he had two jobs okay. to support there's a, there's a new shop that's kind of <laughs> kind of trying to no. corner the market. But I don't think they're open yet either. Uh, it's, uh, it's called Esme's. Don't, don't really know much about it. All I heard was some folks talking about how they might be able, might be, you know, 
sell some of these liquid concoctions. Right, and where is that one? Oh, it's the opposite way. Liquid concoctions. <laughs> he points back towards in the direction of the like where the fountain in the main plaza was. Got it. Um. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, no, I, I just got walking. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Uh, what's your name? I didn't catch it before. My name's Jam Boog. <laughs> Jam Boog. Jam Boog. Jam Boog. Jam Boog. I'm Astra. Um, nice to meet you, Astra. Can yeah. I help you with something? Yes. I definitely didn't spell that right. But um, Jim Jim Boog. Um, Jam Boog. Jam Boog. <laughs> Jam Boog. <laughs> sir. Do you? I feel like every interaction is always like yeah. <laughs> the names. That's kind of I said, Jim Boo. Uh, do you have any making with an A? Yeah. <laughs> Which probably is I mean, the way it spells it. Not really. Do you know where one might find said baking supplies? Um, uh, I mean, what what are you looking for? Yeah, like flour, the like maybe some. Ice and uh, sugar, the usual. Can you take a look? Uh, yes, please. Okay, I'll be right back. Wait, also, any grappling hooks? <laughs> that, we, that I can do. What How long of a rope do you want on that? <laughs> yeah. um, you want 50 feet? 100 feet? Yes. Silk rope, hemp and rope. Wait, mm hmm. Surprise me? Well, okay, can you give me like rough like cost estimate? Also, how about a magnifying glass? I can probably do that too. Okay. Um, do you mind if it's attached to like a helmet? <laughs> it's like you. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> it's like miners. Uh, I was looking more for like a handheld. Like. All right. I I'll look, see what I can do. Like, Might be able to break one off and kind of <laughs> tie it to. A, Duct tape. It's got a crack in the middle of it. <laughs> Perfect. It kind of goes off. You also walked out. Yeah. yeah uh, Ashley is going to just kind of like skip around the store and look. Oh, yeah, I guess they would yeah. have it there. Yeah. Uh, you with the magnifying glass. Oh, no, I'm fine. <laughs> After he's like all bloodied. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we have a stuck. Probably about like five, ten minutes later, he comes back and he's carrying like two like large bundles of rope and kind of balancing between them uh, like grappling hook of sorts. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a three prong like clawed hook. Okay. Um, well I got these. Uh, these will be kind of not that expensive. Okay. I went to check the prices that we're selling those helmets for and they're too expensive for me to risk breaking one of them to uh, make it into a magnifying glass. Okay. If you want you can try it yourself. Uh, <laughs> they're expensive though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's okay. Do you know where one might find a magnifying glass? I used to read these books about this detective, and she was really cool, and she would go around and solve mysteries, and I just, I've always wanted to be like her, and I wanted a magnifying glass. Her name was Nancy Shrew. Wow, oh, her. With all the ropes, you see I got these two ropes here. Yep. I got hemp and rope. He holds up. It's really heavy. It's like, it has to like flex a little bit. I got the silk rope. A lot lighter. Oh. What? What's the pros and cons to each? This one's lighter. Sold. <laughs> How? Well, first. Oh this one will run you ten gold. Oh. Okay. And what about that one? One gold. I'll take the silk. All right. Uh, and this grappling hook. Like two gold. <laughs> huh? Two gold. Sold. The hook. Pretty common. So twelve gold total. You can tie these two together. Make yourself a nice little grapple on the hook on the rope. Did we say 100 feet? 100 feet or was it 50 feet? We said 100. 50 feet. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 50 feet in one hand and 50 feet in the uh, other hand. Okay. <laughs> he asked how much you wanted. I said yes. When you said, <laughs> you said you 50 or yes. 100. Yes. Can't wait until it's like, did you guys get supplies? She's like, look what I got. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you find any flour back there by chance? Uh, flour, 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 flour. Oh, I love it. Oh, I thought um, I had yeah. Yeah, I have some I basic bed chamber. Bag, I don't know how old it is. Bag of flour? Yeah. 
Uh, if it it's expired, probably. I can I mean, take it off your hands. Know. I'm not gonna give it to you for free, but <laughs> I have it for like two copper. You drive a hard bargain, my friend. I'll take it. Thank you. Puts it in your arms and they're carrying these siblings. <laughs> you hand in the coins. Uh, a good um, magnifying glass, by the way, goes for about 100 gold. Uh, okay. Uh, the ones attached to a helmet, more. Uh, well, I, just, I didn't want the helmet. Where does one find a good magnifying glass? Yeah, some of those Namby Pambies over in Ward 1 or Ward 6, or maybe even Ward 2 might have them. Okay, not not here. Okay. Not really. Okay. Not well, much use for a magnifying glass in a mine shop. You know what I mean? That's true. I totally know what you mean. 100%. How many Looks copper did you say that was? Two copper. Uh, mostly electricity. Here you go, my friend. Mm -hmm. Mostly. Thank you. I might have some stuff in that, but Outside. You, you started making your way back. and As you go back, you're kind of looking out for this particular building, the sign that says Esme. Maybe that. Esme, yeah. Esme. yeah. And it's very obvious why you didn't notice it before. There is no My sign. Don't <laughs> work, <so. laughs> There's just like on one on like almost a sheet of paper that's like stuck <laughs> to a door. It's it like just says hand the word written. handwritten yeah. as maze. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, it's like oh. they just haven't gotten their branding yeah. sign yet. They... Um. Okay. I'll uh. I'll go. I'll try to go in. Is it open? Uh, door's open. I'll go in. You go in, you pull the door open, and this, like, bell rings above you. Aww, and he's dead. And, uh, Wait, you, you step left inside. me I didn't, I didn't know that you were going to go back. Yeah, back to yeah. He said he was leaving. You're like, I skip around the shop. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 yeah. I thought, sorry, I thought uh, he was still there, so I would have followed. But you, didn't, you did this exchange. <laughs> it took, like, about five to ten minutes for yeah. the guy. So to he's ahead of you. So but... I'm, I just leave this door. Kelsier? <laughs> You know I was going to ask me. I love how you just spelled 12 gold for things you could probably find at my shop for free. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's why you don't leave a last row. You walk in and you immediately find yourself overwhelmed by scents. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a lot of flowers and herbs Ooh. and uh, incense and just all sorts of strange powdered, powdered oh. herbs Spices. that right. are just Makes scattered sense. around. It's like walking into like a potpourri shop. Mm. Mm. Uh, there's just a, it's also very cramped. It's a very small oh, spot that's space. Okay. Okay. There's that's really not much room. There's, you step in and there's a table to your left. And that's so. there's a woman standing behind it who looks up at you. She's got like curly, almost like brownish gray hair. She's like an older human, almost <laughs> yeah, a, like, a little over middle age, wearing this apron and like a brownish sort of frock. She looks back at you. Welcome! <laughs> You're our first customer! Congratulations! Oh, thank oh. you. Oh god, then why did we leave him alone? We could definitely eat that up. Do you trade potions for money here? <laughs> yes! I can sell you some potions. What kind of potions are you looking for, good sir? Uh, well, I, I specifically had health potions in mind, but if there's others, perhaps I'd... I can see... What, what else do you have to say? I'll be right back. <laughs> she like ducks into the door, <laughs> into the back, leaving you alone in the shop. All right. Do I see like I? With your perception, you can hear like people talking in the back. She's like, "He wants health potions. Where, where's the health potions? Oh, I don't know where the health potions are. Sell them the love potions. That's what we're trying to get. Love potions. Boggers. But we haven't tested any of those yet. You can't just sell those. <sighs> you hear another uh, another voice from the back that just says, "Well, whatever it is, he seems." He's got some money. He's dressed all fancy. He looks unique. Make sure, make sure you get you know you try to get him up. as a first customer, but also make a good impression. We want him to come back. It's just like coaching each other back. In the yeah. back. <laughs> so, um, in the room, like, is is obviously it's a small room, but is anything actually like? Is there any product? on display or is it basically an empty room so the products on display are mostly like powdered herbs and poultices okay there's nothing that seems magical or like a particularly brewed potion on this one gotcha but you do see in the back behind the counter there is like an alchemical station 
like with a cauldron, a beaker, mm-hmm. and like all sorts of like strange glass contraptions. And there's something brewing on it right now. Mm-hmm. You can make out like a bubbling noise with like steam rising from the cauldron. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, I'm mostly just kind of looking around the room and. and... I'm totally listening to what they're saying because they're not being that quiet. They're really not, and it's um, a very small space. So. Yeah. <laughs> um. She comes out and is like, I, I, "We definitely have a handful of healing potions that we can provide you with, um, but would you like to try some of our newer goods? Uh, we've made some potions very recently that can um, help you with all sorts of things. Is there perhaps a special someone in your life that you could?" Uh, you know, uh, that you're looking for a present for? Ooh. Uh, not exactly, no. Uh, <laughs> what, what sort of present are you referring to? Oh, just uh, something that would um, heighten the affection that they feel towards you. And you towards them? You Perhaps you towards that. them? Yeah. Um, okay. Make people get along a little bit more, you know? Oh, shit. Um, Oh, shit. <laughs> Just imagine Why? he gives it to Ark. Yeah. <laughs> Why would someone want that? You're gonna ruin Unique experience? Entire business. Is that not betrayal in a sense? Oh, man. <laughs> well, we have other potions. It's a poor old lady um, trying to make a pun. Um, uh, we have things that will make you be able to see in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Not an issue for me. Um, and anything else? You look quite pale. Uh, we do have something that can help uh, if it's a sort of a skin condition, you know, make you look a little bit more radiant. They're just trying to do um, their part. There are people who want to change the color of their skin? Oh, yes. Especially when you live in this place underground, we don't really see much sunlight over here. Mm. Not interested. <laughs> Is there anything else? <laughs> <laughs> what a deaf customer. I'll go and get the healing potions. Yeah, we sent around <laughs> people on this trip. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. No. Kalt here! You left without me! What the heck? I thought you were joining me. I was making an amazing deal. You should see all look at all this rope I got. It's silk. Is that flower? Yes. It's oh. expired. Oh. oh. <laughs> I put it in my backpack. Do you want to change the color of your skin? What's wrong with the color of my skin? I don't oh, know, but oh. she wants to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's selling potions that change the color of people's skin. Apparently that's a thing. Thread Do you not think guess. that this looks good? No, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> apparently people like to change the color of their skin. Oh, I mean, I can do that. Look. And then I'm blue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. She comes out and she's carrying a satchel and she sees you. She's like, oh, welcome. You're our first customer. You're our second customer ever! Oh my god, I am? Wow, this place is amazing! What kind of potions do you have? Name them all. Oh, shit. Uh, well, uh, I've got, we've got potions that can make people be more attracted to each other and be more affectionate towards each other. Same um, one. We've got potions that will bring a little bit more of a radiant glow. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got potions that can help you see in the dark. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. can do that. We've got potions that will... Uh, I'm probably the best in our group at that, honestly. We've got potions that will help with the hair growth. Okay. Uh, we've got potions... I already have pretty long hair. You do. It's beautiful, by the way. Um, you didn't offer that one to me. <laughs> <laughs> to the bald guy. <laughs> 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 would you like one? No. Oh, I, I would was... love to see what you look like with hair. Oh, That's <laughs> all. How much for that one? <laughs> Just out of curiosity. Well, these healing potions are about 60 gold <gasps> each. <gasps> cool. No ripping you off cool. um, Lucy seems that's so <laughs> she definitely does not know what to yeah. do for that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, good thing we saw Calfia the guy who doesn't understand money, money that's yeah, like that an perfect. awful lot I don't know 
You know what? I got some healing potions for free, Calithier. <laughs> I still have two at home. Maybe we don't even need these ones. Two at home? At, <laughs> yep. At North. <laughs> North. I, 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 we've got three of them here. I know, but I don't know if we even need them then, because uh, we got, we got, I got some for free. I just... <laughs> if you buy all three, we can give you a discount on one of the other potions. All three for 60? I got them for free. Well, whoever sold them to you didn't do a very good job marketing. I've been reading this book recently. Yeah. It's all about the art of making a deal. <laughs> you have to... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I books. love books. <laughs> you need to charge people a, a certain amount uh -huh. in order to you know get fair value uh -huh. for what you've spent so much work making. Uh -huh, totally. It's really quite fascinating. Totally. Have but you I read think the, I think the author was a little bit of a scammer himself, to be honest. <laughs> Sounds um, like, yeah. You should read Nancy Shrew. Books are great. True. Magnifying Glass solves mysteries. Oh, it's fiction. Okay. I mean, <laughs> no. This is day. Not necessarily. Um, tell me more about the hair potion. How much for that one? Well, you need to apply it, and that's why I didn't sell it to you. You need to apply it to hair, and it makes it longer. Never mind. Uh, uh, okay, going back to the one where you make people like each other. Say more. Well, when somebody drinks it, it makes them feel more attracted to whoever they're first see. To them. Um, so you probably preferably want to be with someone when they drink it. And obviously, you know, do it with full consent from both sides in order to make sure it's a healthy, happy and healthy relationship. We're just providing a service, really. Some liquid Viagra. Um, Wait, how happy are we talking here? Like, does it make people like Twitter pated? Or just friendly? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. I'm going to be honest, it's the first time I brewed it. Um, I followed the instructions when it came out looking kind of like it's supposed to. Um, well, I, I bet you did a wonderful job. How much for that one? <laughs> Not counting, he's counting all of the money individually. <laughs> yeah. Probably, like, it's a little bit, like, three days to prove. It was your first time. It took, like, three days to prove. Yeah, but we're also kind of your guinea pigs. Look like a hundred, though, be cool for that shit, one. The ship cool. never going to make it. I cast Charm Person. Oh, God. <laughs> I can do that once per long rest. What? A natural one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fully Makes charmed. sense. She's literally rich, reading, like, fucking oh. monograce. She immediately Get looks rich. back at you and just, like... <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, can you tell me how much to sell it for? I mean, it's your first time, right? Like, we're kind of your guinea pigs. I could be almost like a spokesperson. You said I have, like, beautiful hair, this color of my skin. This isn't even usually the be, color of my skin. You could be an influencer. I read about that in the book, too. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Totally. And look, purple skin. <gasps> yeah. How did you do that? I You're even... so awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I don't like this girl. We should come here more Yeah, often. she drank potion. See, the, the, potion <laughs> the potion that... We made it only really makes your skin a shade darker than what it currently is, but we can make Green. one that can. <gasps> Pink. <gasps> gonna go take some notes. We need to figure out how to make this potion. I go back to purple. <laughs> okay, so here, here's the thing. But yeah, I could yes. be like your your influencer, but I have to make sure it's a good product, right? And because this is the only the first time that you've made this, I'm your guinea pig. But if it's going, if it goes well, I can spread it to tons of people. I have tons of friends. I know so many people. I'm so you're real saying popular. we should give you these potions in exchange for exposure? Yes, that is exactly what I have been saying. This Sold. <laughs> <laughs> Make a persuasion check with advantage. <laughs> persuasion. One hundred and twenty gold. No, put it away. Cool. <laughs> Calcier. She's kind of just really impressed. <laughs> Probably right now. Ooh, Ooh 22. Nice rolls. Tell you what. Mm -hmm. uh, and she looks back at you. You buy those 
two healing potions. Three. <laughs> Three the cost of two. And we'll throw in one of the other ones for free. It's a horrible oh, deal. It's a horrible deal. I don't know. Like I, I'm telling you, I got the healing potion for free. Maybe, maybe we should back out. I don't know if I. I have a lot of people asking me to be an influencer for them. Maybe I should go with one of those ones. Maybe we should go Calthier. Three potions, 120 gold. We'll throw in one for free, but you have to make sure to tell everyone about us about our shop. There's only it's like a. Like a soft launch right now. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be opening, you know, to the broader general public very soon. Um, okay. you, you could really put out, give, do a lot of good for us. We would really appreciate it. What's your name? My name's Esme. Esme, I love that name. That's What's just like name? my name, Astra. Astra, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is Calthier. Calthier, nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, the gold. Are you paying for the That's a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she I hands you back like the satchel with the three buttons. Which one of the other ones would you like? Um, the one that makes people like each other, but hopefully not immediately want to jump each other's bones. Oh, they're jumping bones. I don't quite know if it's gonna do we'll with that specifically, okay. but we'll test it. Okay. She like. That's down below, and like, starts rummaging through the shelf. And the shelf underneath the army cabinet, as she opens it, you just see rows of bottles there. Hmm. All of them different shapes, <laughs> different liquids in them. Some of them are, like, lying upside down. Some of them are, like, lying on their side. There's, like, hmm. almost a bowl that's just full of some liquid that as she, like, reaches in, like, almost, like, jumps up and, like, stings her. Hmm. And grabs one. And she hands you a bottle with the bright pinkish liquid inside of it. Ooh. What is there a name for this potion? Fuck me not. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 no, no. Yeah. Fuck me do. <laughs> not quite. Okay. Because you don't actually know what it is. Okay, gotcha. Neither does the person who brewed it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. They followed some instructions. We are this is what it's gonna kill us. Yeah. <laughs> But you do have one. Just Viagra side effects. Good. Only last for a few hours. Um, three, they're just yeah, three like regular. <laughs> they're, even these three are in like different bottles. Like they're in sure. unique assorted bottles. Right. Um, we need to make them so we have them on the table. It, so you, you said it was like, is she a gnome? Uh, or no, she's a human. She's human? And just like how, like she look young? It's like a little over middle age. Only well, like 40, 45. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, where are you going? Calcium doesn't yeah. need a potion. Um, <laughs> I will. Uh, are. Is there anything. Are you still conversing? Um. Well, I'm not going to go skipping around the shop because you're just going to leave on me again. <laughs> I'm just going to kind of. She's just kind of with taking the coins and she's, she's actually counting the coins, similar to how you were. <laughs> That's me, man. Um, are you ready to go? I guess so. Unless before we go, is there anything else like you know, like any little free samples, like little, like small samples you want to send our way that I can kind of pass on, get your business going as your influencer, Esme. Um, you got some of this. Uh, she like reaches down, like pulls out. Almost like <laughs> they're not quite Ziploc bags, <laughs> but they're kind of just like small, like pouches. plastic pouches. Okay, it's um, weed. Yeah. yeah, she grabs like four or five of them, like hands them to you. Um, the, these are uh, these are our latest uh, scented powders. Um, oh. You simply toss them on a candle, and they'll really light up a room. Oh, wait a minute. Light oh. up as in like <laughs> fight, like. No, they smell good. Oh, do you have any stink bombs? <laughs> but Not, thank you. <laughs> most of these smell good. We don't really like selling things that smell bad. Okay, I'll. As you can tell, and as you look around, like the room, I like it smells nice. There's a lot of different scents all at the same time, but mm -hmm. it's like a nice, 
combination of some things, some slightly spicier notes, some more mellow, like lilac-y. Hmm. You said there was four? Uh, there's five. Five, even better. Okay. Uh, Esme, we should mosey. Thank you so much for your, your hospitality. Thank you. Please put in a good word for us wherever you go. You know, our shop's going to be opening soon. and um, Please come by again. Definitely will. Sure. Okay. Uh, so right as we're walking in, I, I'll let her go first and I'll just say, oh, one second, and I'll turn back around. I'll go back over to the counter. I'll just say, um, can I offer you some advice? <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. Care more what a what you are making and less about how much you're making. Oh, that's actually good advice. Mm-hmm. And then I'll get Kaltir did a thing. Damn, we should get that printed on a t-shirt. I like that. Thank you. <laughs> you Kaltir out. gave Just good <laughs> advice. That Hashtag role was either deep. for a thank Hashtag you or a fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag weird. Get out of my shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We'll take kindly to you. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your you exit and you <laughs> leave with your purchases. Go back to the blacksmith shop. Well, right. Oh, no, right. I guess as we're walking there, uh, I'm in dead silence. You're in dead silence? I oh, know. okay. But yeah. you can yeah, yeah. a conversation if yeah, you want. Um, time in the last time we were at your the uncle? My uncle, I. Um, I I bought these from him and showing you my, my bracers, but I'm wondering now if the gold might be better for us to have on hand. Because who knows what Mirlar would want from us later on. Um, do you think your uncle would be willing to, or do you think you'd be able to help me ask your uncle if he would be willing to, to take these back? What's that? Your milligrams of Viagra. (laughs) (laughs) That's what they just bought. I mean... We'll find out. I I ran a shop like this, lad, like my uncle's, for the better part of the last hundred years, and um, dwarves are not very good at refunds. (laughs) Um, I can ask him. I I appreciate it. If not, I understand. Do you want your money back? Your all your gold back? Well, we'll see what he can offer. Um, I figured it might have been better what he could offer rather than uh, what Miralar would fight off. Certainly, he will. He will take them back. I mean, did you get any scuffs on them? Well, how's the metal looking? How's the metal looking? <laughs> Dry blood. It's looking fine, mostly. Yeah. Um, probably would like needs a little bit of cleaning. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think not, nothing that like a little bit of cleaning and polishing can restore. That's pretty. Here, good. give me the other one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what I can do. He'll probably take it back, but I think he's gonna eat away some of your. Uh, Original price. Th- those look in fine condition, though. All right. And as, you, as you walk into uh, Iron <laughs> Beard's hammer, Uncle Torgan, you hear a little kid's voice shouting from above. <laughs> but mom, how can she go out and I can't? Oh. And you hear a woman's voice just saying, "Cause she's older than you, Tom." Fucking yeah, Thom. Oh, no. Fucking Thom. <laughs> I forgot. What was her name? What was her name? The sister looked like your sister. What was her name? Oh yeah, she looked like Anya. Mm-hmm. Oh, the, the, the girl, yeah. Fucking Thom. <laughs> Thom's the like BBG. <laughs> <laughs> no. You can hear as you enter. Actually, the shop is like, there's nobody in the main floor. You can hear a hammering noise coming from the back. Um, it seems like with the power restored and everything kind of getting back to normal, your uncle has been 
gotten kind of back busy in work. You walk in. Catherine. Hearing the voice. You just a minute. You hear the voice from upstairs, and she comes running down. This halfling woman that you met before. Um, oh, Diamond, uh, how can I help you? you? Hello, dear. Uh, is Uncle Thorgan available? I think he was working on some sort of project. Uh, I think you can go back to the forge and speak when I'm there. All right. Sure, you have a few minutes. How are the little brats doing? You know, there's... Cleo's been a little bit of a rebellious phase. Ran off today in a bit of a huff, and all I can do is just keeping calm, kind of, from not chasing after her. She ran off? Oh, she's just... just <laughs> things around, around the world. I'm sure she's with some of her friends. The, where does where does she usually go? Oh, there's just a few other kids here on the block. Uh, they were the youth that spit on me. There's just a few kids around here on Blacksmith Row, just hanging out, climbing into buildings and on top of rooftops, and really getting up to no no good. Uh, I'll keep an eye on. Trying to get her to spend more time at home and maybe pick up the hammer one of these days but it doesn't you know she reminds me a bit of my sister she wasn't very fond of the hammer either I swear but she had other talents so you never know yeah hopefully she'll find something to put her mind to uh, Oh, uh, I'll, I'll go to the back. I'll leave you. A <coughs> <coughs> uh, nudge, nudge. Oh, we'll speak to my uncle. Of the back, he did the original deal. <laughs> oh, we talk. Is it just Catherine? Yeah. Or is yeah. It, yeah. Oh, okay. There's just like a hammering noise coming from the back. Bang. bang. Kind of make your way past the. the it's really just an archway. Um, the hammering gets louder, and you travel and make your way through into the back into this almost like a multi-level forge that you've been you worked at it for a while over the past week so you're pretty familiar with it uh, for you it's hot in here very it's humid hot. very hot um, it's just and loud and loud very is loud. It? it was just like a ringing noise hot for me as a tiefling or hot for me because i know it's cold. just hot in general okay. i think like it's not like you're more used to heat in general you're kind of resistant to heat you don't really feel hot but perhaps it's just the humid air perhaps it's just the sheer intensity of the heat um, definitely maybe it's just the close quarters maybe it's just the loud noise like something and by the way I, you I, start to sweat i walked in carrying a crate of shit yeah. of goodies yeah. uh, uh un- uncle torgan hi Sorry, Diamond. Have you got a minute to chat? Uh, just give me a sec. Just hammering something out. You can see him working on something. Uh, I drop my crate and I go take a look. Uh, it looks like a very long sword. Longer than the s- most swords that you've seen. It's almost like a great sword. Cool. He's working on. Do I identify the metal, or is it too hot? It's mostly just iron. Um, it is iron, which is something that kind of immediately rings out to you. Um, but there's also, he's leaving behind almost like a trail through it. Of not what looks, it's not like a rune of any sort, but it's almost like a, like, pattern. An inscription? Almost or... like a, it's almost like just a hollow... Like river, like hollowed out, like line that stretches from like the blade on one side all the way up the stem, almost like in a straight ridge oh. to like the edge on the other side. Nice. Did it. Just like trying to hammer it out and make sure that it doesn't become too narrow. Uh, I let him finish that stint. Uh, he only in a couple of minutes is like, yeah. Need, we'll need to reheat the blade and get the other side. How can I help you? And uh, 
You were Archmere, I remember? Yes, yes. Hey, uh, welcome back. Nice to see you again. Be uh, staying for dinner? No, we unfortunately we, we got to go. We have some business outside of this ward and ah. we are leaving for a bit. Where, we, are, you, where are you headed? Uh, we're going to some of the other wards. Um, probably closer to the outskirts of town. Ah. Ah. We'll see. Um, but <clears throat> Uncle... Um, you don't happen to be swinging by Ward 1 any... It might be. Uh, got something here for Planko, if you wouldn't mind delivering it. Did. We do need to see Planko. Well, I need to see Planko. You yeah. need to see Planko? Yeah. Why are you engaging in business with Clanko? Like, he tried to rip me off. Mm. Do you trust him? There are very few people in the city that I would trust. Clanko's not really one of them. But there's one thing I can trust about him. He knows the stuff. Probably one of the best enchanters. Maybe on the continent. Hmm. With that, maybe comes a little bit of ego, you know. <laughs> but he's I, good ego, at what he does. The he's ego the I get. The ego I get. Our clan is full of those people, as you know <laughs> you very say. well. But it was, I don't know, Uncle. Like, he tried to sell me stuff, and then there was less of it than he had promised, and... I got the very distinct feeling that he was very clearly trying to rip me off. I don't doubt it. But he's good at what he does. Hmm. All right. Anyway, um, there's. I've worked with him for many years now, to be honest, and he's never treated me unfairly. No. Always, he's always paid what he's agreed to. I'll forge some pieces for him. Lay the paths for enchantment. Make sure it has electro steel bones. Uh. All right. Well, Uncle, um, I have this box here. There's a bunch of spare ah. metal, and uh, here there's two maces that are pretty new iron, and I also have this great axe, also pretty new, like I killed the guy <laughs> for the first time. Um, and I also have this hammer here that, like, is the stone head, but it has like this electro steel handle. Um, I was wondering, Uncle, if you would, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> trading with me because I have I don't have much money but I could use some upgrades in, in my yeah, armor. I guess I can give you some gold for it, but I'm gonna be honest, like I won't really have much time to smelt it down. There's with what happened at Fasnox and what happened at Deldrox, there's really not that many Smithies left operational and I had a lot of business coming into me right now, which is a good thing. But, um, but I was wondering if you need some extra material. Yeah, but I won't have time to smelt it. You know, I'm just working there on my own. It's not like I have any help or anything. So, mm. uh, I can take it off your hands. Maybe for like 100 gold? Sure, Uncle. But I won't guarantee that I could do anything with it. Do you, uh, okay, I'll take that. Do you have some armor? Um, any kind of protection? Like, um, I don't know, um, pauldrons or... Uh, most of the armor I make is late. <clears throat> it's expensive. It's ready. It's you could say like prime for enchantment. It's not really you're not really supposed to wear it without any sort of magical protection. Uh, is that electro steel thing, right? Yeah. <coughs> and wearing it, it's gonna be kind of brittle. It's gonna be kind of malleable. It's gonna break easily. Uh, Don't recommend doing it without enchanting it first. Where could I go for some? Is there any other shop that you know? Well, with what's been happening around here, <laughs> uh, maybe old Iron Eyes. Iron Eyes. Oh, it's wait. not on Blacksmith Row, which is probably the only way, the only reason that it's not. You might be able to get some pieces there. Everything else would probably be sold out. Where is he exactly? Is he still in the ward? Uh, yeah, he's still in the ward. He's over near the terminal. The Gearfist terminal. Around there. Around thereabouts. 
All right, a little bit of a smaller forge. I think it used to be kind of like a workshop where they built some of the engines for the mining cranes. Uh, All right. Well, um, if you're looking at other wards, there's also probably something around there, like the Red Street Bazaar, if you're looking for something important and fancy, on the right side of the ward. A Red Street Bazaar? Where yeah. is that? Well, it's, in, uh, it's in Ward 5. Market Ward. Alright. Um, I also had another question for you, Uncle. Uh, right. My friend here, um, I think he might have a little bit of buyer's regret. <laughs> um, and he was wondering if you would take back the... Well, to be clear, I've got myself into a bit of a pickle and I need mm -hmm. that money that I've given you for these bracers. While I do appreciate them, I am contemplating but or wondering if they are something that you would take back. Make a persuasion check with advantage. Oh, hi, boy. <laughs> with advantage. <laughs> Uh, Not 20 on one of them. Nice. Uh, he looks back. Uh, anything for a friend of the family, you know, it's fine. People run into hard times all the time. Um, I could probably sell it with the demand that I've got for more now. I'll take it back. <laughs> Love hearing that. 2,000. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Uncle. Like I, 2, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> the I, uh, kind gesture. But no problem. Um, I don't act as a GM. I don't have in my notes how much I sold it for. So I'll have it. Go yeah. back and look at it. It's fifteen hundred. Okay. Um, you like? Uh, I'll have to spend some time making, like, looking through and finding the gold. When you bought that, you, I was not looking. I didn't think I was. I think we were separate. I think so. I think you were working on stuff and you like yeah. left and then came back afterwards to like buy it. You say that to me that you think you can sell it for more now. It's like that's something you said. say to Arkmir. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what she said. <laughs> yeah, it's like Arkmir. It's like... <laughs> and then he pulls out the uh, Galarin sword. Mm. How about. What if. What about this? Hmm. Like, what have, is that? Have you seen something like this before? Takes it. Never seen anything like this before. Uh, where'd you get this? Strange metal. Isn't it? Like, I couldn't Bit. identify. It has a hint of cobalt to it. And yeah. It's very That's malleable. Something almost like a red brass to it as well. It's like crushed brass. How do you want crushed brass? I don't know. I don't know. There's like I thought that there was sulfur in it too because it's so dark. <laughs> yeah, that... but sulfur makes it brittle. Maybe the sulfur was in the brass. <sighs> yeah, where, where'd you get this? <laughs> uh, a gift. A gift from a friend. You don't need to tell me. It's fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know what I could do with it. Uh, it's definitely worth a lot to someone who's would be capable of using it or want to use it. Do you think you'd have a client? I'd like to. I mostly sell unenchanted things. I work with partners like Lanko to sell magical things. Maybe. His shop is probably the best bet. Yeah. Or the Red Street Bazaar, you could try selling it to someone there from outside of town. Maybe keep it for clan calls. Talk to him. He'll be able to give you a better value of it too, to be honest. You, you mentioned it's clear for this, from our original conversation, that Clanco mm -hmm. would be the person I'd like to talk to if I was looking to get something done to these. Yeah. Races. He's the best there is of what he does. 
I appreciate your consideration. It's your uncle. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> wow. Wait, that wait, is wait, awesome. Wait. Yeah, that's pretty good. That is awesome. Like, so uh, the <laughs> Can you hold it up to the uh, camera? I feel like I feel like it's dark enough to see. I can't tell. And oh. Uh, yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> that's, perfect. <laughs> that's him. That's Uncle. Uncle Dorgan. <laughs> Well, do you want do you want me to get you this gold? It's like starting to like pull out and almost yeah. like <laughs> you <laughs> just see him like look under is like pulls out almost like a brick. <laughs> of gold. <course. Yeah. laughs> like a lump of Yeah, it's like, like, a, like a brick, like of... an ingot of gold. Diamond <laughs> <laughs> looks like What? Do you mind getting one? Of, you mind taking one of these instead of maybe about five hundred of those coins? Oh, mm, I may won't really be able to break it up very easily. I guess. Let's we'll see if I can find five hundred more coins. <laughs> Fine. Your reaction to this sword makes me think we might might be able to get by. Or we might be able to get by with getting rid of getting rid of this at Clanko's. Yeah, it's definitely enchanted. Place. I don't even know what it does, but it feels enchanted. <laughs> Do I know? Well, like, I mean, I've had we inspected it, so. Inspected it. No yeah. general idea what it does. Yeah. Yeah. Check it in D and D Beyond. Well, it says you do. You get plus one to your attack rolls and your damage. Yeah, it's in well, I don't know how do I communicate that. It has that conversation. It has on other features. <laughs> it has other features too. Should have other features oh, yeah, wait. too. Is that the one that like? Yeah. Oh yeah. The teleport from the other plane or something. Yeah, yeah. like where you're away from it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so if you're. I'll hand it to you, <laughs> then yeah, walk okay. away. And... Does it require attainment? That'd be really funny. Oh no, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you stay there. Yeah. Because <laughs> if it requires attainment, nothing happens. How do, how do I know if it, it should, say, it should say on the item itself? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm just. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I, I swear it does me. this. I promise you it does this, but maybe uh, I'll save this for another. Save this trick for another day. All right, man. It makes it easier for me. I don't have to find five hundred more gold coins. Uh, here, yeah, and see the sword back. Uncle, can can I ask you a a favor? Sure. Would you keep this uh, this shield of mine? For, for for some time it's and he would recognize the frost break guard yep. uh, emblem I haven't seen one of those in decades I, I I got this other one now it's the same weird yeah. black metal and it has this Ooh. gem on it um, if you find out more about what that metal is let me know I'll let you know but I I don't want to have to keep carrying this other one and it has mm. sentimental value for me it's yeah, been in the family sense. for a long time uh, yeah in the family for a while. Uh, yeah. I think a nice display piece, so I'll mount it up on the wall behind the counter. That's Story a good idea. Okay. And, um, uh, right. Do you sell corsets? <laughs> it's for a friend. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh. 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 That was, oh, that was what I was looking for. I, I, I googled corset with suspenders and it's all like dirty launcher. I, I told you. I wasn't not... joking when I said is it a sexy thing. No, well, no. I think I've made a couple of the order before, but nothing. You suspenders up here. Not yeah. really. Yeah, not, not so, not so, so you don't got that like, thing. I like breastplates than anything else. Nah, that's probably not what the last ones. I mean, uh, corsets are mostly... Leather. They're leather, yeah. Uh, there's a few places in town that you could possibly go All to. All these locations that are on the way. <laughs> Meanwhile, time is ticking. Yeah. Our mirror's <laughs> dying. <laughs> it's okay, you know. <laughs> but I need to find a cute corset. Yeah. Um... <laughs> uh, <laughs> That priorities are straight. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You're a chump on that. 
Yeah, if you're gonna die, you gotta make sure you're, you're at least dressed appropriately. <laughs> like, you're gonna look good for your funeral. Yeah. <laughs> if you're looking for something practical, um, honestly, probably the Red Street Bazaar. The Red Street Bazaar again. Oh, the, the there aren't, that many, the there aren't that many animals and leather things in general around here. It's even most of our animals are made of electric steel, you know what I'm saying? Hi. Do you make any. Do I see like any amulets around the shop or something of those things? Types or is it all just weapons and so it's uh, just weapons and things made of electricity weapons? Oh, okay, then I wouldn't ask. Yeah. Um, you oh. notice, like, up on like mounted up on a wall is actually a really fancy looking crossbow. It's about mm. you know, oh, uncle, do you have use for something like this? And I pull out the big blue gem, he like <laughs> takes it. Make a very nice decorative piece. <laughs> they mount it on like the hilt of something, or on a shield, or something like that. Uh, yeah, work. it's the same as this. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. A little bigger though. A little more oval. Like the one that you have. The one that you gave him. Uh, where could I get the best value for this? Maybe <laughs> um, this off your hands. I'm oh. sure I can find some use for it. I have a lot of knickknacks and, you know, sometimes in a special mm -hmm. order will come in and they'll be like, out of flourish. I don't know what they going That's for a flourish. That's flourish. a flourish. Time and what? Wasn't that a little bit magical? No. Is it actually just a gem? Yeah, <laughs> it's just a gem. It's just a gem. It was, like, charged with some energy. Yeah. But now that it's, like, discharged, it's just a really big old It was gem. the focus of something at some point. It, it, the item itself is not magical. I don't think it's magical anymore. I'm like, I asked Kaltir, and Kaltir did his weird thing. Like, <laughs> Classic Kaltir. Classic Kaltir, and then uh, he said it wasn't magical, so that's why I'm getting rid of it. I mean, I'm not as doing as well as you. I need some money. And he looks like embarrassed to say that. I could give you probably like 200 gold for that. Don't oh, under it, Uncle. Yeah. Uncle. Oh, oh, all right. <laughs> How about this? I'll take you to your 200, but would you make a letter for me to take to Clankos? Some sort of like a reference or. If you're taking the thing to deliver, <laughs> that I wanted. The what? I asked if you could deliver something for me to Clanko. If you're uh, taking that, and but I, I want. He'll know who's from. He'll know that I you trust think, you. Then. Do you think Clankos would give me a discount or some favor? Make a persuasion check. Not bad. Come on, come on, generic tablet device. Mm. Uh, Seventeen. <laughs> no. Oh, Tom. Thank God, is probably not gonna. It's not someone who's just gonna give you something out of his the goodness of his heart. But he won't need to pay someone to bring this shipment to him. So, you know. Right. You'll be saving some money there, probably. How, how about this? Have you got any kind of small tool for um, molding electro steel? Because all, all my smithing tools are for iron. They're kind of big and clunky. And Aye. Ha have you got something? I'll, I'll take the 200 gold plus like some small electro steel tools. I got, got something. It like puts down... like when kind of... There's a few of these. They're a little bit on the older side, but they still work perfectly well. And he gives you almost like, it's like a hammer and a chisel, but the chisel tip is like very, very narrow and fine and soft. I remember how we were doing it before. Cut slowly and shape it, shave the metal off as opposed to forging it into the oh, yeah. place. I remember. Uh, but this should work. You saw I got that fancy new radial one. So I've been using that, and that's what we use. But this is what I use 
for the hammer. Five years before. Uh, can take oh. that. Alright, you got the deal. Here you go, big blue egg. Thank, thank you, Uncle. Uh, we'll be out of town for a bit. I don't know when we will come back or out of the world at least. And What is... I don't know. I'm just... Hmm? Have you already given us this item? Um, he hasn't gone and grabbed it yet. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what is it that you'd like us to deliver to Michael? Oh, uh, one sec. He, like, uh, goes over and, like, pulls up, like, a couple of sheets of canvas. And underneath it, he pulls out... It looks like short swords. It's like four or five of them. Uh, they're all made of electrosteel and like very fine, like narrow blades. They're almost like they're not weapons that you would use, right? To be honest, <laughs> you're afraid that they would break if you were like to like cut something with them. It's electrosteel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they're finely made. They have like. Uh, well-crafted hilts, well-decorated hilts in particular. Uh, one of the hilts has, like, a small socket for a jewel in it. Uh, they're all, like, different sort of construction. Um, I like raw materials when can take together. Uh, yeah, he uh, wanted to make a few swords. I don't know why. Probably got a customer or something. Interesting. Have you ever made swords from electrosteel before? Or, like... I made all sorts of weapons from either from electrosteel or with electrosteel parts. Uh, usually not useful until they're enchanted. Mm, that's what Michael does. does. Interesting. Well, once we deliver them, is there anything that you need us to return? Or... Nah, just tell him to send over the rest of his money. To what? About it. Send the rest of the money. Send over the rest of the money. He's usually good with his work. I I can Planko rubs. Uh, I understand Planko might have rubbed you the wrong way, but he's you know he's he knows his th- he knows his stuff and he 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 can be trusted. All right. Just don't trust him with coin. Uh, I absolutely don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's because he called it out and like. What's that crossbow up there like? That crossbow. That one's old. That's what I had on me when I came here from Carmel. You recognize it. It's very much like Frostbreak Guard adjacent. It's like gotten a lot of modifications made to it over time. Um, does it have a brand on it? It does have a runic brand on it. Um, I keep that one up there to remind me what it Cornhall Forge with weapon looks like. Don't have very many of those around here. So. Did you make that yourself, Uncle? Or was that my dad? It was your, it was your dad. He made modifications to it. Wanted to, always wanted to make it better than anything he could have made. But you know, if you do make your way back to Cornhall, remember to tell him that I was better than him. <laughs> I won't forget. Mm. Oh, and by the way, that's a very fine sword you're working on. I haven't seen something like that before. What's that? Yeah, uh, got an order from some hoity toity noble up in War 2. Who actually wants to enchant it himself, to be honest. Uh, like a really long name, don't even remember. Something like a Lord Constantine, something like that. Constantine, Constantine. Yeah. Oh. oh. (laughs) It's a special order. He said he wanted the longest blade that anyone has ever seen in the city. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And to make sure the the bone of the sword was electrosteel. To make sure. The pommel of the sword. The bone of the sword. The bone of the sword. Probably be another few, another week or two till it's done. How much I don't know what he's gonna do with it. Uh, special order on high demand, like such a short period of time. Uh, I just say 
not... We're pretty well off for the next couple of weeks. I can see that, Uncle. Dealing in ingots of gold. Yeah. Good for you. I'm happy that you are... Yeah, business is, well. The business is looking up. Now, if only the rest of the ward and the city could look up, too, that would be... You know? It may not be good. my place to ask, but... Do you ever wonder if the weapons that you're making are going or falling into the right hands? It's one of the first things you think about when you come into our line of work. You know? It's... We're just doing our jobs. We have to make these. Try to sell them to people who do good with them. We can't guarantee that. Sometimes we sell weapons to armies, to soldiers, to criminals, to crooks. This name you mentioned, uh, it's one I think might be dangerous. Uh, His uh, manservant who came to visit seemed like they were not from around here. Seemed like they'd come here and from somewhere far off. Who didn't really recognize him or the accent. Hopefully, he's only here to visit, pick up the sword, and then leave, and then we won't have much to do with him. If you start worrying about all the lives lost to each of the weapons that a smith forges, it weighs on your conscience. I've learned to do good where I can, to raise my family, to raise my kids, teach them honor, teach them the right way to live. I still I can sell you weapons. I don't know what you're gonna do, go and do with them. I'll trust that you're honorable, but there's no way I can guarantee that. Just now, I. Well, those got uh, deep real quick. Yeah. <laughs> you sure you guys don't want to stay for dinner? Nah, we, we got to, to go meet with meet with the rest of our group. Thank you so much, Uncle. Sorry for disrupting your work. Oh, anytime. Um, anytime. I heard that uh, the little one ran off. If I find her, I'll, I'll send her word to come yeah. back home. She'll be back. She's always running off. It's only you need to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> he has a beard already. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Dwarf, he, like he also has a black belt. But <laughs> it's it's not yeah. I'm pretty sure dwarf kids would have beards. <laughs> yeah, and they, they grow into, when they grow into something like that. They gotta start young. <laughs> I, I'm I'm not that worried about what was her name? Clea. 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 No, that was uh, yeah, Clea. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm I'm not that worried about Cleo. She's she's proven over the years to be able to take care of herself and her little brother when she needs to. Uh, she's sharp. She reminds me of Anya. I don't think you met her, but I she is the striking face of Anya. She's running the family. Aye. Don't let anybody cut off her braid. <laughs> Catherine will stop it before I do if she loves it. I know. There were yeah. these little shits back in Cornwall that cut Anya's braids and they got us mocking that they're probably ringing in their ears to this day. <laughs> Farewell, Uncle. Farewell. It was nice to meet you again. Well, uh, nice to meet you too. Take care of yourself. Don't. Uh... I will. Don't do anything too rash. I will. Oh. <laughs> and you <laughs> probably know this, oh, but... Well. <laughs> uh, be you. careful of that mirror lord. The... Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I know that already. We kind of met him. Not a great experience. Is he... Uh... I haven't seen him in a very long time. Uh, Better that way. Try to keep it that way. Before we go, sorry okay. to just 
to bother you here, but do you know anyone by the name of Hezarek or Deldra of that matter? Well, Deldra, I uh, used to work at the smithy that you were at. And, um, last I heard, he was looking for a way out of the depth of heel to Meroa. Uh, he's going to make his way probably toward five. We look look around, see if we can secure a passage out of the city. This is like a week or two ago now, so two weeks ago probably. And this Hezarek, I know he's a man who likes to build things from electro steel. If you ever, do you know, do you know anyone who would be like in the same realm? Of, uh, of he, was, he was good friends with Fasnov. That's about all I really know. Most of his business was not there. Uh, did see him around. It was one of Marilar's lackeys. Uh, always looking to buy things, to wheel and deal. Don't know where he could be. Haven't seen him in a while. What happened with the old Fasnog's shop? <laughs> Do you know? I'm not interested in winding out. Oh, really? <laughs> Don't want to show my face around there, you know. Last I heard, the cog were there. They're looking into what happened. Probably I'm surprised to even us. see any iron cog in the ward, but. Well. Okay. go. All right. Very well. Very well. Uh, we'll hope to see you again someday soon. Best of luck. All right. And as we leave, I'm gonna keep an eye out to see if I can spot Cleo anywhere. Like as we go our way. As you're leaving, you don't spot her, but you can hear voices of kids on the roof. Um, you can hear both the dog's voice and a female, like short, uh, like low pitched, oh. high pitched. On their own no shot one. potion. But yeah, mm. on top of the on top of the iron beard hammer. Okay. They're just arguing. <laughs> like, why'd you leave me? I have to deal with mom. Ugh. <coughs> Ah, oh, she's fine. It's just up the shop. As you make your way back, as you both make your way back, the big one. What were you up to throughout the day? Furiously masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, he would have um, taken his time to actually like clean up the shop properly, like use some oil and clean down the the spinning table and whatever benches and stuff were there, and tidy up the places. We probably push some things to the side to make the yeah to make the bed. So I'd clean it all up and make sure it's all nice. And then well, when you came in here, the place was tossed, so you're leaving it a lot better shape than you found it. Yep. Yeah, just making sure everything's the way it was um, when we first set it up, mm. and then just yeah, just spends the uh, the next hour or two doing that. And then just as he goes to leave, he just stops for a moment and looks in and just says, "Thank you." And just closes the door, locks it up, and heads. Something crazy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so you lock the door and walk away, and you meet your companions out of the hallway. Do you leave the or out in the road. From the top of the building, there's just a crow that's looking at you all. You can see. <laughs> just turn and start making your way carrying the repulsor cylinder on your yeah, back. Yeah, I got lots of bags. It's yeah. actually, with all of those things that have been built into it, it's actually much heavier. Now. Well, I'm sure it is, yeah. like, cement legs yeah. that are, like, attached to <laughs> maybe, it maybe the professor has a little backpack on him to carry some of my extra stuff. Yeah. It's quite, quite a contraption that, that you've got kind on your back. Side you start making like your way dogs carry out of War 3. Out He's of also got cannons. I forgot to mention I got that, <laughs> that for him. Back into the rest Blast of the Blastoise. Now. That's a good spot to end for today. Uh, oh man. Right. Going on out into the city again. Back in back out of war three. I'm above yeah. hundred. Been underground too long. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Well, until next time. Yep. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.